were glitching with the memory stuck on pause And half have zero fucking clue just who they are or why they're here It's been said that fear is all we have to fear But that was back before the Basil's fear condenser came along Distilling concentrated fear that's diamond pure, crystal clear Oppressor strong and woven into every single article you read and song they let you hear and then Elon heard that Jeff enhanced our fears by 86% And he said, hold my beer And not a single sheep among the herd But turn their head or say a word Cause they were all too busy begging for the shears Begging for the muzzle Happy just to guzzle feed and watch a screen for all their years Man to each his own, can't afford a home But they'll let you have your cozy little ecosphere we're there among your own devices You can break the seventh seal Overthrow the oracles and slay the seer All the tomes were burned and all the lips were seared Shut your eyes and all our lives just disappear Now blink them twice Welcome to your ecosphere Legend says that Hercules swept Cerberus right off his feet and effortlessly set him down softly as a songbird. Atlas kept the world upon his back and every day wondered whether he could stand it any longer. And Tavarid came out to say the man they tried to label the messiah of morality was really just another rapist. And I don't intend to hesitate when asked who was the stronger. Taro, like Assange, knew that carrying the truth would be the hardest labor. Tara knew that her assailant wasn't gonna make us any safer And knew he's just the type of man to hand a decent foreign leader U.S. printed walking papers And knew he'd be relentless and aggressive in the war he'd wage upon her very character That his attempts to weaken and degrade and embarrass her would be her only compensation But I strongly doubt that anyone could ever have foreseen the stream of hate that came from quote-unquote progressives and the self-styled titans of survivor advocation. So if you really think there's something to be gained out of sharing your pain with the world, you are sorely mistaken. The Biden team just drugged their feet addressing Tara's allegations until they had a decent list of smears, then they aired them out on every station. And it turns out no one wants to hear the truth of who they praised as being worthy of such bloated liberal celebration. That no one wants to really know the person they've so valiantly defended Even when it meant they had to gloat and shit all over someone braver than they'd be if given the occasion Now cue the faceless comment squad invasion Cue those fuckers crawling out the woodwork to come analyze the way you wore your hair and what you wear Like your appearance waves your rights or that somehow you're the reason for your situation Somehow they've decided you should bear responsibility for what such monstrous men insist on doing Somehow they're deluded by the empty, hypocritical, and useless fucking platitudes that bastard keeps on spewing. And I think it's very telling that the best of their excuses when they try to come and justify our president's abuses is a hearty butt Trump. In which case I'll remind you that you never saw the news attempt to sell us Donald Trump like he was morally upstanding or a decent human. But when Joe says something bigoted or ogles someone's little kid, CNN says, isn't this refreshing? Biden's like a mix of JFK and FDR with all the finer parts of Harry Truman. <laughs> Christ, I know that they don't think that we're the brightest, but at least pretend we got a couple lumens. Ask yourself if you have ever questioned what they fed you, or do you just shut your eyes and then consume it? And now ask yourself if you ate every one of Biden's lies under guise of harm reduction and the promise of a slight improvement. And now imagine long ago that Biden chose to show you who he really was by traumatizing you for his amusement. 
Now imagine that you watched him touch a Bible with those filthy hands, and then assume the power of the highest seed in all the land, of knowing your attacker wields a global coalition born of three-letter agencies who'll make a life's mission out of trying to discredit you through lies, damn lies, and collusion. Big tech is never gonna separate from our surveillance state. Fuck's sakes, they're just a breath away from total fusion. So there will come a time where even if you see the light, your voice will never reach the sky through all the bots and all the noise pollution. So trust us when we tell you that the masking of abuses is perhaps this country's oldest institution. And I know nothing nobler than facing it in honor of the truth when you know that the people holding power have been neutralizing truth since there was wet ink on the Constitution. So know that Tara's truth is something crucial to the movement. And if you see yourself a partner to the revolution, help this country see through all the baseless propaganda through the crux of Joe's illusions, and recognize that Tara Reid gave everything she had so she could tell us what the truth is. Recognize the decent thing to do when someone bears their soul and shows their bruises is not to ask for context or offer up your own solutions. Your job is just to listen with an honest mind and put yourself on Tara's side a moment so you understand the path she chooses. That there is no instant fame worth the dragging of your name. And if that's what you think, you've a lot to learn about the kind of facts the mob can handle and the kind that it refuses. You've a lot to learn about the news and all its many uses. Guess you've yet to learn the truth the news will serve as fruit from which they've squeezed out all the juices. And we all eat the husk and just pretend it's full of nutrients and isn't really useless. But the jaws of our ability to yield accountability are absolutely toothless. So don't you kid yourself that any lips are being loosened. They won't ever tell us where the bodies are or show us where the proof is. It's on you to recognize the lechery our president so regularly oozes. It's on you to muster up some honesty and ask yourself how Biden won your trust, but it's America that loses. Open up your eyes and learn to recognize the bruises. Open up your eyes and learn to recognize the bruises. Forgiveness. Now's the chance. Take a stand. Stay your hand before you cast another vote for corporate interest. Another vote that chokes your hopes of owning your own home or opening a business. They love to say their hands were tied. The stars just weren't aligned for them to get their votes in line to see their promises delivered. But they killed it in an instant. Bills don't die by accident. They're all assassinated on behalf of the congressionally kismet. By some lobbyists who see themselves as agents of clandestine fate, not fences in a prison. Dealing in the stolen goods of sleeping slaves and trading on the futures of their children. Betting on a spread of daily dead where every grave's creating profit by the millions. For some fascists lurking in the wings and all of their affiliates. And every Aetna demigod our senators conduct their darkest dealings with. It really gets impossible to document or fingerprint Cause it isn't just a pattern of corruption It's the very fabric making up the structure of the system that we're living in So dash your hopes and down a margarita goes You box the shadows, take a little nap And then you get back in and swing again But if the margarita made you sick You probably wouldn't take a drink again 
So if you're voting either party, honey, think again. I recommend you steal your nerves and never serve an officer, a president, a despot, or a king again. And mark my words, the day will come where we will rise and sing again. And if voting makes you sick, well, no one's forcing you to drink again. You finally admit you weren't ignorant You boldly voted Joe like an informed and blissful idiot You chose to blur the parts of Biden you don't find the prettiest Now you choose uplifting news and filter out the grittiest But the truth is something coarse enough that even when it's hidden It's apparent when you feel it on your fingertips I know it's hard to deal with from a distance and up close the truth is hideous but there's just no getting rid of it You've gotta let it in or it just worries at your skin And every moment loud or intimate But shake it off for fuck's sakes You don't have to celebrate or be so proud of progress By imaginary increments You don't have to heap such constant praise on fucking villains Like they're stillborn promises Or honestly just isolated incidents And not the product of the principle of privilege not intentional eugenics just by any other synonym Covered up with desperate clusterfucks of rosy images Labeled plain by any other name except for what the fucking image is So once you stare the page down enough you'll spot the difference That one is red and one is blue and that's the only truth Because neither one delivers on that promise of deliverance One is red and one is blue and that's the only difference and the rest are isolated and imaginary incidents. One is red, one is blue, and that's the only difference. I didn't have to wait for long. I never had to change a song. I just sit it like a raised alarm. Smile when you say it wrong. I can't even. Hello somebody desperate. Hello somebody gullible. Hello anyone left who can swallow the bait who ain't already rocking a stomachful. Maybe they knew and they ate it the same cause there's no other way to assure that their stomach's full. Maybe they just know that they love the taste so they'll put it away by the shovelful. So hello to somebody trying to feed us the light blue shit like these people what's up everybody there's another episode of inn news with my lovely co-host colin and the two people from hardlands and chicago corner kickabello and cherry vesselato down there what's up pam cheers and salutations small come nice. if you got them <laughs> and happy yep. new year happy new year happy new year to all year for thanks for having us on no, yeah, yeah yeah crocodiles in chat <laughs> already um which I suggest <laughs> make that's it happen. Kid. That's Twitch kid, is isn't it? At me. No, no, um, no, not, not me. Not me no, yet. So not other people yet. use the crocodile um, emojis. I thought it was kids uh, trademark. No, no, no. Everyone's on. allowed to. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's, Everyone's allowed, to. allowed to. Yeah. All right. So, we brought, we brought so some stories. Uh, should we look at those? I guess we should yes. do that. Okay. I don't um, know what we're doing. So, so, so um so Jerry you wanted you and Kit wanted to talk about uh the Chicago mayoral race so we wanted to give you some time uh to kind of share you know what's happening and how you guys are getting involved on the ground and well, then <laughs> where, do we be where do we begin yeah <laughs> speaking of clowns like the joker 
Uh, we like to refer to the Chicago mayoral race as the Chicago mayoral clown car, because as you can see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight candidates bundling into that clown car. I don't know any other city that has as many candidates as Chicago routinely has vying for that top spot in the fifth floor uh, down at City Hall. And uh, what a cast of characters we have. Why? Um, what? Why does Lori look like that? Can we start there? Well, she doesn't start... look like that. She. She looks worse. That's actually a, that's a complimentary picture of her. Oh. She looks like be- she really does her her like hair now really does look like Beetlejuice. She's yeah. She look. She's haggard, man. The the job has oh. politics always adds years to, years to politicians, right? Yeah. And she's showing yeah. it now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my so god. So we also got we're going to talk about Frost, right? So we yeah. That too. So new Congress elect. Uh, Maxwell Frost, uh, known as the first Gen Z congressman in Congress, uh, hasn't been sworn in yet uh, due to the fuckery that's happening in Congress right now with the GOP. But uh, Glenn Greenwald uh, posted a tweet um, about him that I found very interesting. And you're probably wondering why Richie Torres, that's the guy behind, is standing there. So we will share that with you guys. Um, um, and then Reef, what do you got? I got some stuff on Joe Biden messing with uh, an attorney that called out Virgin Island stuff with Epstein. So that that'll be interesting. Oh yeah, and, that's a big story. Oh and my we god, got eight hundred and fifty-eight billion dollars. <laughs> Who, is that the D- Department of Defense? Yes, pretty much. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so, I think, so we're going to talk about where that money is actually going to. Yes. So yeah. And it's not all where you think it's going to go. Yeah. I have a conspiracy theory that it's going to fund research to protect the Earth from an asteroid that's heading towards us like that movie Deep Impact. Because where else could that idea. much money go? I, I mean, well, I, I'm gumball well, machines gee, gee. is what I think they're putting it in, but that's just me. Um, all all I know, I told my friend Jerry, you got to get busy living or get busy dying. My friend oh. Kit told me to get busy living and get busy dying. Free. That's my that's my Morgan Freeman. My friend. <laughs> um, but anyway, so bad, we bad. should <laughs> probably get started here <laughs> since that's why we have you peeps here. Um, yeah, so... I'll let you take it, Colin. So, oh, so, so by oh request, um, we asked you, uh, Kit requested to pull up uh, these two clips. So, yep. Jerry, do you want to... So, actually, first of all, can well, you talk about why is this race... As you mentioned, there's eight candidates. Why, why is this so significant that you guys are wanting to take this on? And what do you what is your role or what do you want your role to be uh as far as you know coverage of this race in i so from my perspective i actually got involved in the two no the last mayoral race no last two mayoral races i got involved actually uh as a media producer for two mayoral candidates campaigns amara enya dr amara enya and mm-hmm. then subsequently the next mayoral cycle she ran again and then she bowed out and then Alderman Bob Fioretti got into the race and I acted as media producer for him. I've always felt because I'm a progressive, uh, the best way to channel my talents as a media producer into politics is to get behind and provide media services for candidates that I felt represented my values. Now, unfortunately, Amara was not everything that we hoped she was. Bob Fioretti, when he finally bowed out, um, he endorsed Rahm Emanuel because Rahm Emanuel promised to wipe out his campaign debt or write a check to help him wipe out his campaign debt. And Rahm never delivered. So Bob, unfortunately, kind of fell on his sword. And we saw, despite the fact all of these candidates were standing up against Rahm in the end, were they really? <laughs> so, you know, I got a little bit burned out and I got a little bit jaded getting behind candidates that I felt represented my values, but then where I started to see the chinks in the armor. So with great uh, opportunity and and gratitude, I got involved with the folks over at Hardlands Media 
And um, they offered me the opportunity to host Chicago Corner and produce stuff there. And as we've been building that channel for the past two years with this mayoral cycle, I don't have to get behind one candidate that represents my values. I can cover all of them. And we can cover all of them. We can invite them on the show. We can go out to the mayoral forums to ask questions. We can have aldermanic candidates on the show, which we have. I've already interviewed two. We've got one coming on next Tuesday. We'll have more after that. We're looking at also exclusively live streaming a mayoral forum being hosted by the People's Response Network to get more eyes on Chicago Corner, but more importantly, to be able to share what's happening and what the candidates represent, good and bad. There are actually a lot of candidates in this race that we saw at the last mayoral forum that Kit and I covered that were in alignment on a lot of important issues like mental health, reopening the mental health clinics that Rahm Emanuel shut down, Mm -hmm. um, addressing the infrastructural uh, deficiencies in many of our South and West side neighborhoods that, you know, Lori Lightfoot for all of her, her identity politicking is a, you know, uh, lesbian woman of color. She's pretty much turned her back on African-American neighborhoods in the South and West sides. So I see this as a great opportunity to your question, Colin, that we can put a spotlight on those that are willing to come on our show, as well as cover stories reported on by local media. Mm -hmm. We read a lot of news stories. We comment on the corruption. We analyze things. And we also have a wonderful component in our show in the live chat where we interact with our viewers to talk about the stories or actually ask questions of the candidates that we have on our show that we've had on our show to interview. Um, So when we were out at the Copernicus Center, Kit and I, uh, we were the only um, media entity there that set up a spot an hour before the, the actual forum that was hosted by Ben Jarofsky and the 38th Ward Democratic Committee. And we were able to like corral, Kit was going to the tables and getting the candidates, lining them up so we could put them in our yeah. you know, our, our area there. And uh, we had quite a scandal with our first interview that Kit covered. Uh, Willie Wilson, his yes. uh, one of his assistants decided to try to bribe another candidate into dropping out of the race, Jamal Green, who yep. we're very, very excited about. He's, he's a great candidate. Yeah. And um, I'll let, Kit, you can add what you want to add and then let the interview speak for themselves. All right. So before we play the interviews, Colin, you asked why this um, election is so significant to me uh, and to Jerry. Jerry gave his perspective spot on. I have to agree with it. My perspective in looking at the significance of the city election. Look, I get that a lot of people are burnt out by electoral politics. Right. I'm, I'm not here to change people's minds, but at least here in Chicago, The reason why this election is important is because I personally feel that this city cannot survive another four years under the incompetence, thin-skinned, and comedic nature of Lori Lightfoot. She has proven that all what she brings is disorder, chaos, (laughs) corruption, abuse of power, and ignoring the working class people. She has allowed environmental racism to still continue on as industrial facilities are still polluting the South and West Side neighborhoods. There is lead in our drinking water. Hypersegregation is still happening in our city. Yes, Chicago is segregated, but we got something more special. It's called hyper segregation. You also have large real estate developers moving in, buying in large pieces of property and land, displacing families that have been living here For generations, I recently found out that my great-grandfather was born in Chicago in 1890. My roots go deep. There are families who have been here longer than mine who are being displaced. Mm. There's also unchecked police corruption and police brutality. Political corruption is still happening. The reason why I'm covering this election and why I'm promoting in Harlan's media and I'm also promoting for people to go to Chicago Corner and subscribe to Chicago Corner and help Chicago Corner on Patreon and so much more is because the voter turnout in 2019 was the lowest it's ever been. And just so all of you understand the bigger picture for your viewing audience, Lightfoot won the election by a landslide, but it was the lowest voter turnout. There are many Chicago. 30 percent. 30 percent of Chicagoans came out, which meant only 15 percent of Chicagoans voted her into office. Right. And and, and 100 percent population. And by the way, folks, look, again, voter turnout's key. And I feel at this point, and this this, this is not me trying to be disingenuous. It's not me saying lesser of two evils. I'm saying anybody but Lightfoot. I'm hoping that in the primary, it's two candidates and none of them are Lightfoot. 
We cannot afford a Lightfoot second term. And just so you know, when we covered this event at the Copernicus Center, Jerry was doing a fantastic job moderating the entire live stream, getting it set up. I told Jerry, hey, I'm going to start posting some pictures so we can get them on the Chicago Corner and Harlan's Media Instagram page. And I walked out taking some photos of the empty booths. We interviewed six out of the eight mayoral candidates. The other two couldn't interview us because unfortunately, it's not because they didn't want to. It's because of traffic and there was a lot, a lot of tight schedules. So there you go. But I noticed a table getting set up. It was Lightfoot's campaign. Mm. And as I'm taking photos, I take photos of Lightfoot's table. And I said, excuse me, is the mayor going to show up here? They said no. And again, at the Copernicus Center, Lightfoot and Chewy Garcia did not attend. And that was really shocking. So I asked them, well, if Lightfoot's not going to show up, can you two at least ask questions or answer questions? Because, you know, you're representing the campaign. And they said no. And these were two college students. So I said, well, this seems very odd that, you know, you're setting up a table. The candidate's not here. You can't answer any questions to the press. And you're showing up here just as the debate is 30 minutes in. This is suspicious. 30 minutes from starting. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was, it was already, they already set up their table as soon as like the, uh, the debate is starting. Like, so this was like, they didn't set it up. I thought they set it up in in the one hour. um, No. uh, Group meet and greet before the the forum started. No, no. no. After it started. After, after, after. Oh, I thought you brought me the, the you were telling me. Okay, that's fine. I, I, yeah, I yeah. lost After. track of the timeline. No, no, it's perfectly fine because I know you were up in front and you had like three or four of your friends visit you uh, at, at the event. So I know you were uh, talking to them and, and I was already maining the live stream. So uh, what happened then is one of these interns under their breath looks me in the eye and says, this is a very difficult job mm. yeah. of the Lightfoot campaign. Yeah. This is a difficult job. Jerry, can you believe that? I mean, honestly, I completely, I, no, I, 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 I mean, I mean, it's, just, over, it's overworked and underpaid if they're paid at all. It, it's, 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 it's again, it's, it's, it's what we saw in 2019 when Daniel and I covered the 2019 election, when Rahm Emanuel didn't show up to the first three mayoral debates. So um, I don't have confidence in Lightfoot. I think that she's showing her true colors by not attending uh, at least the first forum. We'll see if she attends the others, but again, she's, she's not accountable. She does yeah. not. She does not believe she's accountable. By the way, we call her Rom 2.0, only two inches shorter because she's just a continuation of the neoliberal nightmare that Rahm mm. Emanuel has introduced to Chicago and, and basically fled office on when he couldn't run again after he covered up the Laquan McDonald execution, as I call it by the police department. And he knew he wasn't going to win once that was exposed with the FOIA request. But, you know, Lightfoot promised she was going to be a progressive reformer. We believed she would be. I voted for her because she was holding police accountable with police reform. She got in on her identity politics. And it's just more of the same and worse of the same kind of policies that Rahm Emanuel introduced. As Kit said, I, I, you know, he's absolutely thin skinned, unaccountable. She runs things like she's the queen majesty of Chicago reporters who call her out on her shit. She shuts them down. Then she starts talking about how she's only going to be giving interviews to uh, reporters who are black. And it's like, what is the color of a reporter's skin have to do anything with it? Are you suggesting that people are asking you challenging questions because of the color of your skin? We know they're not. She just likes to dress everything up with the the shield of identity politics while she's completely bungled and mismanaged things here in Chicago. And I also think that, uh, you know, Chewy Garcia is another one. He ran for Congress, right? The teach the Chicago teachers union asked him to step up and represent their interests as a progressive candidate. He didn't have, he's he asked them if they could wait. They said, no, we need to get stuff going now. So they, uh, they, uh, um, they, uh, what's the word they recruited and endorsed Brandon Johnson, commissioner Brandon Johnson. And he got into the race early, you know, then suddenly Chewy wins his rewins his congressional seat. And now he jumps into the race. My speculation, my suspicion on this is that the, the elite democratic party that runs everything in the United States, you know, for the Democrats, they've got their tentacles all over Chicago and the state of Illinois. My suspicion is they see that Lightfoot is vulnerable, right? Right. Uh, to all these these other eight, seven or eight challengers. So they asked Chewy to get into the race because if Lightfoot's vulnerable, he can either, re- because they're 
they're both good soldiers, Lightfoot and Garcia to the Democratic Party, right? They're both good soldiers. If Lori loses, Chewy's here to basically maintain the same kind of control that the Democratic Party has on everything Kit was speaking to earlier, the corporate uh, the corporate uh, mutation and, and infestation into affairs here in Chicago. Now, if 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 Lori does win, Chewy served to basically help uh, dilute the vote amongst all the other good candidates that got into the race early. So mm-hmm. win or lose, the Democratic Party is still going to have their control over Chicago. Not any of these potential candidates who emerged early to challenge Mayor Lightfoot on all of these horrible policies that that uh you know she she's engaged in with her cronies across in corporations banking and everything else across the city great so yeah. colin you 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 brought these two these two weirdos doing doing stuff <laughs> um so God, are, yeah so- holy holy cow like i don't know what i'm thinking in that phone like already oh, i kind of look like this is like a wwf match like i heard you take it on the undertaker kit Cream of the crop. <laughs> so you just, I'm gonna take him in SummerSlam. Off balance, okay. on you, balance, doesn't matter. You um, you requested to bring uh these two clips. So the yeah. first one yeah. we're gonna look at is uh with Dr. Willie Wilson. Um, who Not Nelson, I guess you interviewed, unfortunately. Right? And yeah, by the way, was... really quickly, yeah. Willie Wilson's corrupt campaign uh colleague who was trying to bribe the Green campaign, his name is Hendon. Kit, I mean, I know you were we you said Henderson, but just so oh. you know it's Ricky Hendon. Yeah, that's Ricky who it was. I mm. yeah, I realized that too. Like that that now now I realize, hey, look, folks, I'm only human. I that's right. No, no, you are. I mean, I just wanted to clarify in case people <laughs> and and then when I talked to J Mal afterwards, we did, you know, I was I was pronouncing it. So it's okay. I mean, there was a lot to juggle there and a lot of no, yeah, in this mayoral clown car car we call Chicago. Exactly. Right. So so let's play it for the people so you guys can see my interview with Willie Wilson. And again, uh, 10 out of 10, I think he's my favorite person I've interviewed for Harlands Media and Chicago Corner. That, and that's, I'll, 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 I'll take that with my grave. Willie Wilson's right now, number one. Right. He's a character. We call him Mushmouth yeah. Wilson because he's, oh, go ahead. Well, you'll see why we call him Mushmouth Wilson. Okay. He is going to interview Dr. Wilson and uh, stand by. I think we got a lot of good stuff com- coming to you. And uh, here you go. All right. Uh, I am honored to at least introduce our first guest. Uh, he's running for mayor. The second, this is the second mayoral run that he's running for. First time we saw him was in 2019 on the Harlands Media Channel. I'm proud to introduce none other than Dr. Willie Wilson, who will be joining us. Uh, and again, folks, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Chicago Corner. Dr. Wilson, please, if you may. Dr. Wilson, thank you so much for joining us here at Harlands Media and Chicago Corner. We appreciate your time. For our viewers and subscribers, uh, what are you hoping uh, to at least take away from this town hall forum? And how are you going to make yourself stand out against the other candidates that are vying for Mayor Lightfoot's position? Well, what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to be ourselves. I'm born down in Louisiana, Michelle Cropper, 11 sister and brother. And we work our way up from the boost, boost prep. Uh I'm just regular people. You know, I'm just going to be myself. And I'm with regular people. And I'm going to stay with regular people. And... Not going to try to be something that I'm not. Now, in regards to this, it's been reported that Lightfoot will probably not attend this town hall. Will this be a repeat of what we saw in the earlier stages of the 2019 election when Mayor uh, then Mayor Rahm Emanuel wasn't attending the mayoral debates or town hall forums before he resigned? Are you going to see? Do you think history will repeat itself where Lightfoot will be a no show? I'm surprised she's not necessarily coming here, but when you don't show up, that's a sign of weakness. You, I think the last time the community voted pretty well for her, and this time she's not really uh, coming herself, and she should be here. I mean, these are uh, citizens of Chicago, and citizens of Chicago should should uh, be able to hear your thought. What are you thinking about? Where are you going to take the city to? How are you going to get the crime down? How are you going to lower these taxes? You know, these are important things, you know. And so they should be here to answer the people and try to come up with some answers. How you going to fix it and how you going to make sure you get the morale of our Chicago police department and the first responder like the fire department, things of that nature. And then final question. And this is in regards towards already this election cycle is getting heated up. There's an ongoing fight between you and Jamal Green. And the one thing that a lot of our viewers have been asking is Ricky Henderson still part of your campaign? 
Well, on that piece like that, I don't talk about really that because I had nothing to do with that. That's a personal situation between him and Jamar Green. We had nothing to do with that. They've been fighting for the last four years since last election. Uh, I, when I found out about it, you guys knew about it as well. Uh, that's a situation they need to work out themselves. But not only that, Jamar Green, is, I got grandkids his age. I'm not going to say anything to, to hurt him. You know, uh, he'll learn later on. He'll thank me for it. You know, because he, he's, he's, uh, I got grandkids, and I'm just not going to say nothing to hurt him. He got a future ahead of him. So then in regards to Ricky Henderson, that's a yes or no. He's not part of your campaign. He's not associated with you. And if, if he is, does it call on the fact of Chicago? Like, again, this is, it seems a game of Chicago politics that we are all too familiar with. He, he does petition for me. Um, you know, he does that for me, but he also he has an independent company. You know, and so I don't try to get involved Cut with him his loose. independent. Or he don't try to get involved with mine, although I think he realized that that feud between him and Lamont is personal. They need to work that out. You know, no, if I say something against uh, a kid. What do you know about Lamont you know, anyway? I, I, I could damage you don't know him no Lamont. Because I do have people that listen to me. And I, I would damage him. I don't want to damage him as I don't want nobody to damage my kid from not knowing such things. Yeah. You know? Then in regards to this, I'd like to bring up my colleague, Jerry Vasilatos. This is a project that the viewers of Chicago Corner have been working on. Jerry, I'll give the mic to you. Thank you. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Wilson. So we at Chicago Corner have been compiling a list of uh, issues that are important to all That's Chicagoans. Right, and we've kind of there irreverently we called it our Chicago Corner Manifesto. But it's meant to unite the city Perfect. from north to the south, shot. east to west. So we're asking all candidates we, we meet here today to very seriously <laughs> take our list of requests that we feel all mayoral candidates yeah. should look at, answer yes or no, add your comments. If you could email it back to us, we'd really like to get all candidates on the record regarding a lot of the issues that our viewers have asked us to pass along to all mayoral candidates. So I'm going to leave this with you. Hope that we hear back from you on it. It's nothing we have to talk about right now, but I'm hoping that we can get some of your thoughts and you can email scan it and email back to us we can get your thoughts on a lot of these um issues that are important to a lot of our viewers across chicagoland well let me get it to my campaign manager i got a debate tonight i'm not gonna be concerned about filling this no this is not a, I, I don't expect you to do this tonight this is for you to take with you this is basically homework for all the candidates i don't need it right now we just wanted to make sure that you got it so that you can respond to us because we really do feel a lot of these issues are very, very important. And we do hope the candidates are responsive to what our viewers across Chicago are hoping to get from a lot of our mayoral candidates across the city. And concerned about all citizens of Chicago. Chicago is too divided right now. It's too segregated. We need a coalition of white, <clears throat> black, Latina, Asian American, other American, to bring us together. He's right about that. And, and that's what we all be about, and that's what we all we should be about. All citizens. <laughs> Think, pause it for a moment. Pass, pause it for one moment. Right now. This is how yeah. he's uniting all of the people in Chicago by giving out hundred dollar gas cards to buy their votes Great. every other month. I mean, the fact that, that Ricky like Hendon is trying shit. to bribe. Well, we've told people, hey, take the gas cards, cash them in. It doesn't mean you got to vote for him. But uh, you know, look. This guy, Hendon, who was b trying to bribe Jay Maul to drop their, their challenges to his petition signatures by paying off Jay Maul to drop out of the race, it's it's just uh, business as usual. They're used to buying what they want. Let's buy this candidate and say that we'll pay him and make him whole, you know, if he drops out of the race so that Wilson is is the, the more powerful candidate with more money, just the same way he feels it's completely acceptable to give gas cards, $100 gas cards to, to, to voters in the hopes that they're going to remember him when they go into the voting booth, which has nothing to do. Now, Wilson also leans very right. He's a big Trump supporter too. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah. we're not tribal, but I mean, you know, if, if someone's going to be supportive of Trump, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a screw loose up there. So yeah, um, but he's are also you a, very pro business, and very pro cop. Are you a proud pro, other American? Pro, other sorry? American, other, Amer yeah, yeah, other American. Yeah. Yeah. Other American. Other I'm American, sorry. I'm sorry. you know, are you are you proud of America? Like, how, what yeah. is his voice? He needs a vocal coach. Reef. Can we get him one? Reef. Guys, he's a millionaire. He's a self, and I give him credit, and mm -hmm. I respect that. I just don't know how this guy. So, someone told me he might have a learning disability too. Which, okay, mm -hmm. it's not fair to make fun of his diction. 
but it's just like the guy. Yes, it is. Diction or not. If you saw, <laughs> if you saw him during the forum, that forum, when he appeared with all those other candidates up there, it should have been over for him because he could not properly address any of the questions given to him in any way that was clear or made sense. I did. I did like his response about the bears leaving Chicago. It's like, no, get rid of them. Yeah. I, I did like his, we all agree that on one. that. Yeah. Yeah. We all agree <laughs> oh, on that one, but, um, but Colin and reef, I actually owe you to an apology. Mm. I posted in the zoom chat, uh, a link to something I did in 2019. Okay. Uh, and it is probably my favorite collage video we ever did. And yes, Willie Wilson's in there too. I would be wrong not to do this, but uh, if you can, if we first, I think we should play Jerry's interview with Jamal Green <laughs> first. Mm-hmm. And if there's time, I would like for you to play that video too, because I think yeah, Jerry's I interview with Jamal Green, it is night and day compared yeah. to my interview with uh, Willie Wilson. Now, again, look, I asked Willie Wilson very clearly, like, hey, are you going to get rid of this guy? Not once, but twice. And he gave me a word salad. So obviously. And he's got a funky salad, don't he? What? Yeah, yeah. And, and and so and so obviously, like, I don't know what else I could get from him except more of the same. We talked about this on the Friday show after this uh, election that we are this forum that we covered. And it's just more of the same. But I think all of you will be thoroughly impressed and really happy to see Jerry's interview with Jamal Green. This is I've, a candidate. Yeah, this is yeah. a guy to watch. I look at Jamal Green and, I, you know, look. I can't officially endorse him on the show. People know I'm behind him, but this guy to me, he represents my values, mm-hmm. whether I yeah. think he's young and he might not have a chance. He's number one on the ballot. They, he actually won the lottery to be the number one name on the ballot, which is very, very helpful. He introduced an incredible plan the other day called Epic in regards to uh, getting more people in affordable housing, uh, addressing a lot of the issues in the neighborhoods, mental reopening the mental health clinics. He's very mayoral. And when people say, well, he's too young, it's like, yeah, well, what have all these other older experienced candidates done? Nothing. Right. They've, they've screwed it up even more. So yeah. I want a young man. He's in his late 20s, very eloquent, very educated, very smart. And I think to me, he kind of, he kind of, uh, I don't know, I, I, he's like a young Harold Washington to me, if I do say so myself. Mm. Okay. Well, well, we'll finish up with Mushmouth here real quick. Okay. I don't think he's got it's much too, left. Uh, too divided. You can't fix a city if you leave somebody out. We're in full agreement, and we thank you, and we wish you luck, and we appreciate you meeting with us, and hopefully... And we hope you do well as a Barry White backup singer. All right, very good. Thank you. But otherwise, bye-bye now. All right, that was pretty cool. I almost did a spit take. uh, (laughs) Obviously, uh, all of our viewers... Okay, I knew the costume designer for Barry White, so... It looks like there will still be... I just asked her how many sequins she had to order. He and said too Jamal many. Green. So <laughs> it's quite clear that, as I said too before many. on the show and on Hardlands Media and our other colleagues in independent uh, media as well, that this election cycle is going to be just as intense as any other election that we saw, specifically in 2019. So uh, in regards to Lightfoot, um, he was very critical of her. So I will say at, at least we do appreciate his time. We all are. Uh, come here. We all Kyle are. Turner, so I think. <laughs> I know. I, what, what are you Lay saying? Lay off me. I'm glad that he to- spoke not, with us. I'm not I, attacking I, I you. I'm just transparent because I was not it. it. <laughs> I'm punctuating it, kid. I wasn't knocking you for it. It's funny because we <laughs> it's all, all good. are. I feel like kid, I, I feel like you need a cowboy hat to be taken seriously here, though, kid. You, know? <laughs> you need like oh yeah 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 cowboy in Chicago yeah, yeah that that, that you works like the man in black well. thing Rider, going on riders of the storm you know? exactly riders of the storm um, <laughs> you need like a bolo tie going on it'll be all right <laughs> um I'm going- our point no don't do oh, yeah. that okay so we go. got this we is got the this guy um. Yeah. You want to just hit the button? I'm I'm down. And yep. go. We have Mr. J. Mall Green. Thank you for joining <laughs> us, J. Mall. Pleasure to see you. I understand traffic was tough. We know. So, do Are you, you saying J. Mall on purpose? Was invited tonight, or is she? Is that just specifically? I mean, so that's how you pronounce his name. J. Uh, I mean, that's how I pronounce his name. Is it? That they would invite it to all candidates. I feel like he's lying. Him. She's the mayor. It's she definitely she doesn't have to show up to, you know? to things. <laughs> He just wants to be as fancy. She continues to look at those poll numbers. She'll show up at some point. So let's talk a little bit about your exciting candidacy. There was some controversy with uh, the Ricky Hendon scandal. We actually had an opportunity to talk to Dr. Wilson earlier, and he did not give a yes or no to the optics regarding Mr. Hendon staying with his campaign, which, it, well, all due respect to him, to us, kind of seemed problematic. I don't want to editorialize too much. 
But um, you feel very strongly that uh, the claims in your petition challenge against uh, Dr. Wilson are pretty strong. They are pretty strong. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've been clear as far as the residency, as far as the pattern of fraud, um, you know, as far as just the, the full petition, uh, um, all of the sheets not being binded correctly, numbered, notary stamped, and circulator signatures, et cetera. So that's pretty strong. I think that we'll have a, uh, we have a great case right now. It's in records challenge as we speak. Um, uh, right now, the Board of Elections, right now, they're checking the signatures. Um, so we'll hear, hear something soon. All right. So I know that this is going to come up in the forum tonight. This is not a gotcha question, but it's a tough question. But I know you've answered it before. For people who haven't heard you answer it, I want to give you the opportunity to share your answer to this question. Many critics of your candidacy have said you lack the experience. Uh, you're young. How do you uh, how do you address those comments to really convince people that those claims are unfounded in regards to the experience you do have, and I think the benefit of youth changing things, youth, younger candidates changing things because the experienced ones seems to be kind of business as usual. Well, I think you've answered it for me. <laughs> three things. Well, okay. Number one, <laughs> three things, you know, uh, number one, what have the folks with experience done for you? What are the people in this race? Just look at the people in this race. Let's look at the, what they've done, the elected positions that they have now or the jobs that they've had before. Tell me what have they've done to make an impact on your community, on your life. And you'll see that the people that has all of this experience, it doesn't mean that they'll have an agenda that's for the people. Uh, number two is I'm not tainted. That is a great thing, right? It is a great thing that you have a candidate that is not uh, tainted, controlled, puppeted around, that has real policies that really benefit the people, and that is nine times out of ten going to keep their promises because they don't have those ties uh, and they're not uh, uh, tainted by, by old seats. And number three, yes, I'm young, right? Um, but when you talk about the experience, talk about the experience that I do have. The experience that I do have is in the community, whether that was uh, uh, on behalf of Laquan McDonald, on behalf of young people throughout this city, uh, fighting on behalf of businesses to keep them open uh, or, or um, uh, get them back open after they were looted, raising a quarter of a million dollars, forcing Chase Bank, fighting the largest bank in the world, forcing them to give back a billion dollars to the South and West Sides. When you talk about the experience, I don't care what it is, housing, young, uh, um, violence, uh, mental health, um, every every different issue we can go down the line. I can show you how I've been on the front lines fighting for that without the title. And uh, I think that experience with the people fighting for the people matters more than experience in government being corrupt. So let's talk about banking, because you have been at the forefront of an initiative to provide affordable housing for people across all Chicago communities. And we you kind of addressed this at your uh, press conference at the uh, petition drop off. But for our viewers that don't understand the concept of the benefits of a public bank and how it could help Chicago's, not only your economy, but perhaps also help uh, the, the crushing deficit and our budget shortfalls we're always dealing with. Can you, <laughs> I know it's a complicated subject, but as, as Reader's Digest as you can, tell our audience why you're, you're proposing this, why you're so much in support of it, and what those benefits are so people will perhaps expect the same kind of proposals yeah. or support from other candidates. It's so important. Yeah, it's so important for the city to have a public bank. I mean, we're in the city of, uh, uh, in a situation where we need our own economic engine to be able to invest back into communities. And we've been leveraging billions of dollars. I mean, uh, um, putting b billions of dollars in these banks that the bank has been leveraging um, for their benefit and investing in private prisons, investing in immigration detention centers, investing in fossil fuel industries. And then you look back and you say, hey, what is their numbers when it comes to mortgages in on the south and west sides? One percent, two percent in six years uh, uh, compared to the rest of, of the city of Chicago. So they're also redlining communities and they're not our partners in rebuilding the city. If we have our own bank. A bank of Chicago, where uh, we have a nine member board, three put forth by the city council, three put forth by the mayor, three as elected by the people that uh, has priority of uh, um, that puts the priority of money out, whether it is uh, mortgages, whether it is income based uh, uh, housing development, whether it's small business development. And then when that happens, the profit that comes back from that bank goes right back to city services. It's not investing in the, the prisons, it's investing back in the people. So that is whether it's paying down our pension crisis, right, or whether it is being another stream of funding for our underfunded schools. Uh, it's up to us on where we want that the, the excess of revenue to go back to instead of leaving it with the banks, and we're not getting anything. It just makes the most sense. It makes too much sense, which is why it seems all the all the, all the our political leaders who are, you know, connected with crony 
uh, associates are not really focusing on it. Um, any new development, exciting developments in your campaign that we haven't heard about? Because look, you've been leaps and bounds. You got number one on the ballot, which is very, very helpful. I mean, look, you've got a great candidacy, but being up at the top there, people are paying attention to what we're doing, sure. trying to promote candidates. Any uh, other news from your campaign you want to share? Well, not yet, but we got some exciting news over this next week on uh, how are we going to really increase the voter turnout? And so uh, I'm excited. Our team is doing well. Um, you know, uh, I love being looked at as the underdog candidate uh, because somehow the underdogs always win. You heard it here first. So I don't know. Uh, well, may, hopefully you've heard about this, but if not, I'll oh, Jay, Mal, we're really quick question. So um, we have what we call on our show the Chicago Corner Manifesto. This is. Uh, you've heard about it. So this is basically important issues, and I would imagine you probably align with almost everything, if not everything on this list. So we're asking all candidates we speak with, not tonight, but if you could take this with you, it's a little bit of homework, yep. fill it out, review what you agree with, what you have comments on, email me back at jerrychicagocorner.tv. And obviously we wanna have you on the show again, but we're trying to like get candidates uh, feedback on what the other issues are coming from the people across the city of Chicago that you might not know about to address so we can talk about it. So that's your homework, sir. No problem. It's a pleasure to see you. All right, take care. All right, I mean, at least fantastic he sounds like he's work. Got, he's got something. He's got things that he wants to do. He's got to his do. shit together. You yeah, know? he's got his shit together. He's got a plan. Yeah. If yeah, we say and, ballot and initiatives, is... one more time, Roger Meadows shows up, so we have to be careful. <laughs> shit, I said it. God. Ballot initiatives. Ballot, ballot initiatives. initiatives. Ballot initiatives. <laughs> That's there right. Um, that man filled my DMs with ballot initiatives. What? Um... <laughs> But Hell yeah, no, him. Roger Meadows is a but did he tip? But did he tip $2 for it? Oh, definitely. Multiple. Yes. Um, so sh shout, out, shout out to Roger Meadows, who does a lot of great work. But um, so, folks, look, those two uh, videos, those two interviews that I that I picked um, show what, what I think is a major issue here in Chicago. And that is you have Jamal Green on one spectrum that's calling for public banks social projects, social works, and brand new ideas. Yes, thank you, Jerry, for that, uh, about helping out the people of Chicago. But then you have Jamal Green, <laughs> who, uh, not Jamal Green, uh, Willie Wilson. Dr. Wilson, yeah, Willie uh, Wilson. Uh, Muchmouth Wilson, yeah, Muchmouth yeah, Wilson. Dr. Willie Wilson, who, well, acts pretty much like a establishment politician all right right stooge now, now the thing is obviously the key thing for the primary is voter turnout and i see uh you know you're already trying to pull up the video um of this yeah, interview yeah, that yeah. I, of this collage interview that i did in um 2019 look in 2019 we got lightfoot a lot of the chicagoans that i interviewed on the street didn't even know that a city election was taking place right. i am seeing the dedicated hard work that Jerry and Edward and the rest of the people for Chicago Corner are putting into in regards to educating our fellow Chicagoans. This year, we have a primary and a general election of who's going to become the next mayor of Chicago. We cannot afford any negligence or people being lazy for what's going to happen in this election cycle. And we have to save the city. Okay. So I want to pull up this interview. We're this, all this. Batman in this election. We must yes. save Chicago. We must save Gotham. There are good people here in Chicago. <laughs> right. So I want to pull up this Horner Park Fieldhouse uh, collage interview that I did. You'll notice a younger Jamal Green and a Willie Wilson interview that that effectively this is the interview that broke me. This is the interview. Willie Wilson's interview is usually I'm straight. I'm stern. I'm able to keep my keep 100 percent. That interview broke me. I had to run outside and laugh. But I thought everyone <laughs> should play it because 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 a perfect example of what we saw in twenty uh, of of what we saw in twenty nineteen compared to twenty twenty three. But everyone take it easy on me because I didn't I didn't have my beard or my long hair back then. We're gonna no, look at yeah, baby evil kit. kit wasn't here baby yet. Kit. <laughs> no. Yeah. On July 25th, 2018, a mayoral candidate forum was held at Horner Park on Chicago's north side of the city. Nine candidates showed, except for one. Mayor Emanuel. Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Yet again, Mayor Rahm Emanuel is not here. Uh, again, he's not really participating in any of these forums or debates, as well as previous other forums. What kind of statement do you want to make? What kind of statement do you want to make? What is your response for Mayor Emanuel's lack of uh, participating in these forums and debates? Well, uh, she well, if I had been a issue, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have came either. 
you know, because he's not like. Well, you know, he's not participating because he, he doesn't have a good story to tell. And he, he's, you know, he tries to avoid any, you know, any opportunity to appear any, at somewhere where he could possibly get booed. Look, I think his absence from this incredibly important conversation ah, that's it's happening life all point. over the city speaks volumes <laughs> about she what he cares about and oh, what he doesn't care mayors. about. He, he's not going to do anything he's not forced to do. That, like, that's the nature Napoleon of the complex. I mean, it fits his pattern. I mean, what's my statement on his lack of participation in um, any democratic uh, exercise? Well, I have nothing to say to the mayor. I mean, he's going to do what he's going to do. I mean, I don't have anything to say. He's the incumbent. He has the right to. Uh, he's going to definitely have to be a part of it once we're on the ballot. You know, I think it's really inappropriate for him to not participate in these forums. Well, I think it, it's a, a, something that people should be aware of in the sense of you have candidates out there putting themselves out. Uh, we're going to say things that might be agreed upon or might not be agreed upon, but we have to convey our message to the citizens of Chicago. And if somebody's not willing to do that, then they shouldn't be eligible to run for mayor. If you want to be the mayor of this great city, you've got to get out there. You've got to meet people. You've got to listen and you can't to them. Question and you've got to demonstrate a level of compassion <laughs> and empathy for the day to day struggles of everyday Chicagoans. And the fact that he won't come out in public in these kinds of forums and interact with the citizens, to me, is disqualifying. He gets the office. Pause it for a second. His... Pause it for a second. On, pa yeah, pause it. Now, keep in mind, she didn't come out to the mayoral forum we covered, but the next day, mm. she had her own forum with her big Lori Lightfoot banner on the stage with uh, Mary Trump, who was Trump's cousin and somebody else. And you know what they called it? I'm not joking, you guys. It was the safe space forum for women in politics to share their platforms and their ideas focused on, on Lori Lightfoot's campaign. Let me it let was, you it was it was an echo chamber is what it was. A tone yeah. deaf echo chamber. There she is in that video talking about how the mayors have to come out and be accountable. But then the night after she's invited to a forum and she's got the empty table there that kid took pictures of, she's doing her own fucking thing to, sorry, to control the message. I don't want you get guys to get YouTube strikes. We're, 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 oh, we're oh, past 30 okay. seconds. We're good. Okay. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, by the way, folks, look, I mean, safe space forum. Let, let me let you all on a little secret. Life is not a liberal arts college campus. Okay. Life is brutal. You're going to be running into mean, brutal people. You got to get ready to take the hits and deal with them. OK, Wait, you can't hide being... forever. Do that again, brief. The hoes be knowing. They do be knowing. <laughs> yeah, do be the knowing. hoes be knowing. The they hoes be knowing. knowing. Thank you, Anna Banana. <laughs> Banana. Um... PR has very controlled press events. If it's not controlled, he's not there. Like he's never going to show up to something like this. Uh, he needs a control. He's using his playbook. Uh, he needs it. He needs the it weird one is, is, uh, He needs uh, paid applauders. But once the debate happens, we'll be able to like, expose Ron like, for who he is. Use the microphone to get distance. Like, like, huh? Oh, oh this, is this, this is it. 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 This is the interview that broke me. Okay. Economic equality is not there in fairness. I would look. Something wrong with him mentally. You gotta have something wrong with you, serious wrong with you <laughs> mentally. I'm not for sure. I think we need probably he need to be in that. Got some problem with him mentally, dude. I, all of these would be great soundboard <laughs> no. parts for us. No, 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 no. He was, he's like, he's like, look, there's something wrong with some. I wasn't prepared for it. I was like, hmm, he's gonna say something. He's like, look, there's something wrong with wrong man. Also, why did he mentally. like mentally? X Men mentally. try to like him. put that in your head. Like, there's I, something. There's something wrong with him mentally. These are not the droids you're looking for. Like, that's so weird. Yes. Why like, are they like the weird? Song, Kit, like, like Kit, I need <laughs> to agree with him. There's something, agree with me. There's something wrong with him mentally. He needs to be in there. As soon as I said, I said, like, thank you for your time. I, I handed Daniel the mic and I was like, I got to go upstairs. And I ran, I couldn't stop laughing. That, that, that caught me off guard, came out of left field. And then I think good good cookies writes, why does Kit look like he wants to hit all these people? I'm I'm showing my <laughs> stoic face. His stoic I'm face. showing my stoic uh, my stoic face. I didn't look like I wanted to hit anybody. No. Well, <laughs> no. Um uh, anything else to add? There's so much uh, going on. What more can you say? I mean, it's 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 a we got some good look. We got a better batch of candidates this year, I believe, aside from Lightfoot. 
and Garcia. Uh, I think Jamal stands out. I know that there are a lot of people who are in support of uh, Brandon Johnson because the teachers union has endorsed him and drafted him. And I do think that, I, you know, I lean towards the teachers union as far as really representing what the best interests are for our kids as well as themselves. Cause I think the teachers are very underappreciated and very underpaid. Um, it was encouraging to hear other candidates at the forum that we covered in alignment on a lot of the issues that Lightfoot seems to be completely oblivious of. So nice. Hold on. And let's see. So I saw that Laney. It's awesome. Somebody's watching hey, me on TV. So my co, yeah. so my radio co-host is in a bar, and they have Kit on the television. Hey, hey. That's right. Harlan's Media is on TV, and uh, yeah, so much more. Is that and the that, Can TV strip? The Can TV? Yeah, uh... yeah it, it it should be. It better be Can TV. Yeah. I hope it's. Uh, I hope it's, it's us. Also... Does that mean we get to like do like free wings if you like use code Harlan's Media at the but like I feel like we should be doing an ad for the bar while we're like, but we're in the now now. You know, uh, like it's that thing. Uh, so somebody's saying, mm. "What is uh, Can TV?" It's Chicago Access Network Television. Mm. Uh, we're on Channel Twenty One mostly at ten PM, but we do have a lot of other stuff there too. And then, uh, did you do? Somebody wrote this. Uh, when Kit's on Can TV, he's known as Can Cabello. Can Cabello. Uh, Chicago uh, Access Network Cabello. Yeah, I, and then there's then there's Yipper who says there's something wrong with Kit. Mentally, you yep. think mentally. after after doing this job <laughs> from 2017, mentally. after doing this for almost God knows how many years now, yeah, you go a little crazy. You go a little crazy. Ugh. Five years doing this, you go crazy. You it's go like, crazy. It's like it's like Nancy. They sound drunk, and you just like you have to keep listening to like figure out. It's it's that thing. It's like a train wreck of a voice. You just have to look at it. You know. And with Nancy Pelosi, it's either she's drunk, she had a stroke that hasn't been reported to us, or somebody <laughs> yeah. didn't pick up her pollen or her dentures. So yeah. that's all I'm uh, saying. Am I being unkind? No. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no, you're not. No. Um so I do have to say this, uh, given the quality of the candidates aside. Um, I think what you're doing, I think is very commendable in terms of yeah, national politics is important, but I think a lot of us on the left right now are kind of realizing that, and I think hopefully the focus, you know, moving into this year is that we need to focus more on local politics. So I really appreciate you guys taking the charge and saying, you know, like you both live in Chicago. Uh, I know Danny's in the chat too, so I know he's a part of this too, as well as Laney. You know, just, you know, you have to focus where your home is because these politicians have the most direct influence as to what is happening. And so I really appreciate you guys for, um, you know, taking the lead on that and kind of showing us, you know, yeah, we need to care about international politics, but they really shouldn't take more for precedence than what's happening in your town and city where you live. Because ultimately a lot of the ideas, and especially with Jay Maul mentioning about public banks, those are the issues that can hopefully kind of rise you know, on a national and state level. So we need, and that, so those ideas are where, you know, those bigger ideas in terms of the federal level are going to come from. So that being said, you know, because I know Jerry, you kind of, um, we don't have you on for too much longer. What are ways your audiences or your audience and, or how can we, you know, at INN kind of support you in terms of the work that you're doing well two things first of all i want to thank you all for having us on the show me along with kit i also want to thank my co-hosts at chicago corner ed heller who is uh filling in with me now on tuesdays and fridays our other co-host kira is out on maternity leave i have a dynamite amazing support staff there and i couldn't do it without them uh ed uh kira if you're watching i hope you're out there uh you know how much i appreciate both of you i only miss the fact we don't have kira right now while she's expecting her new baby and mm. i also want to thank laney peterson who's jumped in and helped us with civically minded chicago um as far as supporting the channel i can only ask please uh find us over on youtube under chicago corner like and subscribe we've got a library of videos there if anybody who's outside chicago wants to learn more about chicago and we have our website 
chicagocornertv.com, where if, as you scroll down, you can see our most recent YouTube broadcasts and our Twitter feed. I just posted uh, some standalone segment interviews with the alderman we've been uh, interviewing. We also have wonderful comedy and irreverent takes that Ed and I are now doing, especially uh, Lori Lightfoot's uh, message to the city of Chicago at the holidays. We have a lot of fun on the show. I feel we don't just want to be informative. We also want to entertain. And um, please, as I said, uh, visit our chicagocornertv.com website. We're also on Patreon. We're at uh, patreon.com slash Chicago Corner. We are also live streaming on Rockfin. The best thing you can do to help us is to like, subscribe. You can afford five bucks a month uh, to help us with our expenses. Because as we go into the field to cover live events that we want to cover, you know, we do need to potentially hire freelancers to help us uh, round out our crews uh, to to basically provide what I'd like to be, have high production value polished video for everything we do at the channel. So follow us on Twitter, Chicago Corner TV. We're on Facebook. We live stream all of our broadcasts at YouTube, Rockfin, through Facebook and through Twitter when we're live, Tuesdays and Fridays at 7.30 p.m. So please join the party in Chicago. Links are in the description as always for people who are lazy yeah, cool. and don't want to put them in themselves. Um, but they're there. <laughs> you can find Jerry at Chicago Corner and I think it's at Nightstar Pro, right? On Twitter. I think Yeah, you can find yeah, my personal Twitter is Nightstar Pro. I'm also a uh, yeah, I I I'm a news a junkie. Um, and that's how I kind of got into this, uh, joining 99 Perspectives and Hard Lens Media, but I'm also a media producer, director, um, editor screenwriter so that my nightstar pro was originally my best at nightstar boy. pro on twitter was to support what's that best boy uh, best boy yeah 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 crime well, fighter the key social script. media crime fighter well what mm. what i want to say about jerry for for, for those you don't know jerry's been working his uh rear end off uh for chicago corner uh for those you don't know he we did a phenomenal overhaul of uh getting like toys and food uh on christmas uh, before christmas eve and while the frost and deep freeze was preventing some people from showing up we collected about 144 pounds of canned food that will be turned into 20 120 nutritious meals for people that need it we brought in a great haul of toys uh for those of you who don't know as well that again look Chicago Corner, it is a YouTube channel that we started from Hard Lens Media that is dedicated to cover Chicago stories. Because I feel, and Jerry and the entire team there has shown to me, that Chicago is a front and center city that deserves the attention. Because if we can win against the corruption here, it is a turning point in the battle for citizens all across this country to get true representation, not only at the local level, but the state and federal. But we got to win here. And the only way we're going to do that is through local media. And the only way we could do that is through independent local media. And yep. you know what? You're going to hear it on the ground first from Chicago Corner. And for those of you who don't know, Jerry Vasilados is, again, a phenomenal director and producer. And be sure to check out some, you know, about J- Jerry. I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you give you a shout out here on this one, buddy. But your 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 film Solstice and your other work has been getting a lot of awards. So if you're not following Jerry Vasilados on Twitter, you better do it. All right. If you don't got it, get it. If you don't get it, go figure it out. Or I'm gonna have to. There you go. Appreciate that. Thank you. The Chicago Mob. You can also find me at. You. Uh, yeah, exactly. you can also find my. Uh, my, I'm at jerryvasilatos.com is my personal website. You can also see what my production company Nightstar is up to at nightstar.com, which is N-I-T-E-S-T-A-R.com. Yep. And on that note, I will be going to Sundance at the end of the month uh, regarding Fun. a feature film project. I'm hoping to direct if we can schmooze and network with the right people there, but I'm very excited. Uh, it's a project I've been developing for a while. It seems like we, we, the, there's some light at the end of the tunnel and I just hope it's not an oncoming train is how I always like to put it. I'm yeah, remaining was... pessimistically optimistic and optimistically <laughs> pessimistic on the success that we might see. So hopefully thank you, it doesn't cost that. you another arm and a leg is pretty much what you're saying. Yeah. The first movie. Yeah. So really quick side note. I love to joke about that. I used a personal injury settlement from losing my leg to finance my first movie. And I do not recommend anybody finance their first movie that way, but I do like to joke my first, some people's movies cost them an arm and a leg. Mine just cost a leg. So there you go. (laughs) You just got to go like Ash versus evil dead with it and put a boomstick on there and you're good to go. You know, dude. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Or he's a no, 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 no. Um, uh, 
Planet Zombie. Mm. Uh, you know, if, if that was uh, not not it wasn't directed by Quentin Tarantino, but it was uh, he did Grindhouse guest ones, star right? in it. Yeah, yeah, the Grindhouse film. It had the machine gun on the leg. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, that actress what was like the chainsaw uh, leg. I've seen that one too. Yeah, that one's good. She was the one who actually came out. Wasn't she the one who? Uh, was talking about all the horrible trafficking and stuff in Hollywood. I'm fr- she was one. She was on Charmed. Yeah. Was that actress? I Rose think McGowan. who had like the Rose McGowan. Wasn't she the one who had the rifle leg? I think. No, Possibly. I don't think so. It wasn't um, her? Oh, okay, maybe it was Planet, else. Planet Terror. Hold on. Planet Terror. I don't know. Planet Terror. It was Rose McGowan. I know my actresses. I Yo. Know it was so her. anyway, no. I'm once again asking for your financial support. Hit those Patreons down in there for Jerry, but Thanks, otherwise, guys. yeah, you know, good to have you. We'll have you on again for sure. So yeah, love definitely. To. Yeah, I would yeah. love to stick around, but I know that this was this was Kit's night. I just wanted to pop in and 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 thank you all for also joining us great. and what we do with Hardlands no Media Chicago Corner, gentlemen. It's a, been a pleasure, and I will hope to talk to you all soon. Have a good night, Kit. And all right, take care. Thanks, Jerry. Good night. Take care. I'm gonna switch to three person did- mode. There we go. Damn, Look I that. did not know Rose McGowan was in Planet. I thought it was somebody else. I know, crazy. That's right? freaking awesome. That is actually pretty awesome. So, you Damn. know, no Sub Zero, but we got Frost at least the Kirkland oh. brand Sub Zero. <laughs> um. Oh. <laughs> uh, and by the way, Reef, you have <sighs> it as JB. What? <laughs> I have it right on the first one. Has are these not linked? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> God. Anyway, that was hard to fix. Yeah. Um, so first of all, first of all, as someone who worked at Costco, let's not put the Kirkland brand to any of these uh, don't jack put off them to politicians. Shame. Okay. Yeah, please don't put Kirkland to shame. Don't attach the Kirkland brand name to, oh. to a politician I'll in use, Washington. Use Sam's Club Especially a, a a Jen's there we go. That's better. Better. <laughs> better. <laughs> Um, what is the Sam's Club brand? I don't even know. That's see, that's what you're saying. Everyone no knows idea. the Kirkland brand. Everyone knows that. You know. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Sam Club's brand. Mm-hmm. Sam's. What is the Sam Club's brand? Members Mark. Members Mark. What? Okay. No. Okay. What? That's weird. Um, that's like the Kirkland what? brand of Maker's Mark. That's what that sounds like. What? Um. Anyway. Oh, that that sounds that sounds so. Members, Mark. <laughs> what are you like? You're urinating on the floor, or jerking yeah. off on a thing. What? I thought the members, Mark, was like six, six, seven, something like that, close to it. Um, I don't know. Colin, you got a story. You you you. Have I do stuff. have a story, which unfortunately, it's not a it's not a happy tale. So. So most of you by now probably know about Maxwell Frost. You probably have heard him, like mainstream media has noted him as the first Gen Z congressman elect. You probably also heard him in regards to, you know, his apartment troubles as he cannot secure a depart- a- apartment in D.C. Uh, because of bad credit. Um, but you may not know, and actually some of you do know that he has been known or has been talked about in independent media in terms of, you know, going against the Palestinian community. Uh, He's based out of uh, Orlando, Florida. Heard about this for a while. Um, You know, wanted to talk about this story back then, but just we decided not to. And then over on Monday, saw this from Glenn Greenwald, which I think kind of proves sometimes it's worth waiting we to gotta hear like about stories thing, that you want to talk about. Um, I got you. So, yeah. So, Glenn tweeted this out on Monday, which I found very interesting. Amazing, but not surprising. New progressive icon Maxwell Frost spent years as a pro-Palestinian activist. To run for Congress, he reputated and reversed his views on Israel, cheered by Richie Torres oh. and crypto money, enraging local activists. And then Link... Uh, Glenn linked this article uh, from the Middle East Eye. Um, I forgot who wrote this as I pulled it from the version. Maybe. Um, 
Yes. But this article was written in August. Um, and by the way, any articles that we read uh, will be linked in, in the, the description, description below. Um, but this article reads, How Florida Progressive Maxwell Frost Courted Palestinians Then Abandoned Them. Maxwell Frost has made national headlines. After winning the highly contested Democratic primary election for Florida's 10th congressional district in August, the 25-year-old progressive now stands a chance of becoming the first Gen Z member of next year's Congress, which he now has. Arising as a grassroots activist and organizer fighting against gun violence in the U.S., he stood by side by side with Palestinian activists last year during rallies on the anniversary of Nakba and stood mm -hmm. up against the forced evictions of Stanley in Sheikh Ara and other parts of the occupied West Bank. So last year, when he fought about for, of running for Congress, Rashad Murak, a Palestinian American and grassroots organizer in the Orlando area, saw no reason not to support him. Maxwell is someone I've known for a few years. We've organized together post-George Floyd in the streets for Black Lives and for Free Palestine, Mubarak told Middle East Eye. Okay, and then next slide. Whoop. Um, Let's go find out. Too. Yeah, There so, you go. So many young people felt compelled to be a part of his race because of his vocal and bold voice on Palestine, leading many members of the Florida Palestine Network to participate in his initial launch campaign video. Essentially, he built his campaign off our pain and our hope to elect another voice into Congress who advocated for a free Palestine. Frost was embedded in local Palestine, Palestinian activist circles, and it was even in a group chat with all the pro-Palestinian organizers in the Orlando area. He had signed the Palestinian Feminist Pledge, which calls for supporting the Palestinian-led boycott, divestment BDS. and sanctions, yes, movement, mm -hmm. ending military military aid to Israel, and rejecting the conf conflation of anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. Sounds I'm great. I'm getting a lot of was and had. Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He also signed a similar pledge from the Florida Palestine Network, a local grassroots group of pro-Palestinian advocates that was sent to Congresswoman Val Demings. The lawmaker, Frost, is now set to replace come November. Yep. A copy of both pledges seen on IME showed Frost's name among the signatories. So when the FPM learned of his decision to run for Congress, they were all in support of him. Of course they were. Uh, I had initially felt great about Maxwell as a candidate. There didn't seem to be any question about his views on Palestine. I was ready to fully support him. He was a grassroots organizer, and he was in the streets with us every single day. So can you zoom in a little bit, Reef? Yes. Thank you. So... Lamia Mokuldan, an organizer in Florida who was shown in Frost's first campaign video. However, over the course of the next year, Frost began to receive more support on a national scale, as well as an influx of pro-Israel endorsements and corporate money from a crypto pack that was spent, spent spending heavily against candidates critical of Israel. Several organizers who spoke to Middle East Eye shared their experience, experiences of working for and supporting Frost because of his grassroots beginnings, only to have Frost later come out with a position paper that reneged on many of the promises he made to local activists. Uh, next well, slide. I, yeah. I was absolutely enraged. I marched alongside this guy every single day for months, Makanan said before taking a pause. At a minimum, we had a very high level of camaraderie. He had complete access to Palestinian Americans that can only give him information and experiences and share with him anything he may have needed to know or had doubts about. Murak had been one of the earliest individuals working on Frost's campaign. According to her, Frost came to her when he was considering a run. Murak supported him knowing Frost's strong record of supporting Palestinian rights. He had been present in rallies in the Orlando area and signed multiple pledges on the issue. I actually helped Maxwell build out his campaign from scratch, his kitchen cabinet, which um, so move, please. Yep. Um, which operated as an advisory to the campaign. Wow. I connected him with local and national community leaders, stakeholders, and grassroots organize organizations across the district, but also across the state of Florida and across the U.S. She also said she helped Frost uh, identify key donors early in the campaign. Frost Kitchen Cabinet, which included a Palestinian voice with Morocco, would meet on a regular basis to discuss campaign strategy. For Moran Al uh, Dada, sorry, 
a Palestinian American organizer whose family is originally from Gaza, supporting Frost was a no-brainer. Hmm. Yeah, do they? Right? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is like standard Florida stuff. It seems like, honestly. Okay. Um. What do you mean by that, Reef? Uh, well, it's just it's Florida. APAC's gonna come calling eventually. Like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. It's it's well, probably I mean, outside of Israel. It's the biggest exodus of you know village members is down here. So you know, like we call them snowbirds. Um, right. But you know. Um, so go ahead. In last year's protests, he was literally standing next to me chanting "Free, Free Palestine." Da da told M E E. It was refreshing to have this progressive candidate finally here in Florida, and we're going to go hard to support his campaign, and we did. And we did. Next slide. Jeez. I, again, folks, uh, sorry, Colin, I don't mean to cut go you ahead. off here, but uh, look, um, don't go all in having high hopes and aspirations for these politicians, okay? Yeah. They will crap in your hat, to quote my grandpa, all right? They're, that's what they're going to do. There's no accountability, and the thing is, he probably, maybe at some point, Frost kind of cared. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But something happened, probably when he went to Washington, D.C., he realized, oh, I need an apartment. Oh, this thing costs money. Maybe I should start playing ball. Turns out maybe all the stuff he was saying he didn't believe in, which is why I'm going to say something controversial here. Hmm. I apologize, but hey, you two can correct no, me if I'm wrong here. No but apologies let's... needed. All right. So look, in 2016, when Trump became president of the United States, or when Trump was even running in 2016, 2015, 2016, you saw this rise of activists, organizers, community organizers, you know, people saying no more hate and all this other stuff. They would be nothing without Trump. Yeah. All these people who came into power or gained prominence or either that jumped on the hype train of stopping the next Trump. All that stuff they say, all these progressive policy issues and anything else, they're just going along with it to expand their name for clout. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in it. Just like how you got these extreme right wingers who will just do this. Some of their extreme right wing. Some of them probably do. But I want to bet a vast majority don't really give a damn. They're just in it for the clout and the money. Does Costco and the fundraising sell clout? and the power? I feel like Costco uh, got the Kirk, like a deal the, on clout. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Kirkland clout, the Kirkland clout. It's really great, actually. It's very good for the uh, upper body. Nice, nice. There you go. Does wonders for the well, skin. Um, well, yeah. Kent, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it seems that Frost kind of capitulated way before he got into. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, I'll read on, and you'll see what I mean. Oh boy. Um, Zoom in, please. Yep, I got you. Uh, thank you. Things have been going well on the campaign. Support was growing and donations were pouring in. But a few months into last year, Mubarak and the other Palestinian activists began to harbor concerns with several moves made by Frost's campaign. One day, Mubarak noticed that a post on Frost's Instagram of a pro-Palestine rally was removed. When she brought it up to the campaign, the post was republished, but this time it no longer referenced Mubarak. Mubarak reached out to Frost demanding to know why her name was removed from the post. And according to her, Frost said that the Palestinian American's name was taken out because local endorsements had a problem with your advocacy. One of Yo. Oh, that's dirty. That is dirty. Damn it, Frost, you dirty, dirty bastard. <laughs> or it could be because that they were Palestinian. That's was more selfish yes. to me. Scary, Most scary likely, yeah. Palestinian. They might throw a rock somewhere. God forbid. Um, yeah. So, wow. Um, you're talking. You're telling me your staff com com felt compelled without your decision to change your caption as part of a violent erasure of a Palestinian woman that has been a part of your camp since its inception. Because I'm vocal for human rights. On Palestinian liberation, Mubarak said. So if you actually go to the next slide, yep. you can actually see the post. So if you look on the left side, you notice if you scroll down, it says, he says, Maxwell, Orlando is in solidarity with all facing oppression across the globe. From Palestine to Colombia, we denounce it all. 
So that was the first one. And then the second post, when he reposted it, he puts in, Orlando stands for solidarity with Palestine to Colombia. So... No, it's different. Yeah, you know, what, why, wow. why? Why was this change... He didn't even change the part uh, that you should have changed if you're worried about it. Yo. Right. A bit shout out to Ra Rashmek for leading the... Right. So okay. like that was taken out. So it's just mainly the person. So oppre so oppression and denouncing it was removed. Yes. Oh, got the definitely. No, not I'm oppression. sorry. I'm sorry. This 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 is uh no. The the fact that he changed it, and not only was it him making that order to somebody to change it, but originally for him to remove it, he was hoping no one would notice. Right. Mm. Right. Scumbag. Right. But she did. Oh, and... He'll he'll fit in right in with his uh, new big sister AOC. Oh no, not even AOC. Not even get. It's a probably worse than AOC in a lot of ways, maybe. So oh, no. if I continue reading, yes, sir. Um, I can zoom for this one. Here we go. Thank you. Ooh. One of the biggest concerns was an endorsement Frost received in March from Richie Torres, the pro-Israel progressive congressman from New York. Yay! Yo. Yay. I knew it. We call we Richie call this Rich. out because 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 we talked about this on Hardlands Media with Slaney and uh, I think even a few other people too in regards towards uh, what Frost is going through. And the thing is, we all kind of joked about this, but there's going to be some congressman that's going to be knocking on a good old Frost door and be like, "Hey, I hear you're having some apartment troubles. Maybe I can help you out." Mm. Right. Right. God damn. So, you know, dirty. While many progressives in Congress have been more vocal in their criticism for Israel, Torres Who? has often One? come to Israel. Go ahead. Torres <laughs> has often come to Israel's defense and has received funding from pro Israel groups, APAT. Yeah. The news came as a shock to m many of the Palestinians working on Frost's campaign, given that in their eyes, the two politicians' views were at odds with another. another. Then, organizers saw Frost received a $1 million pledge from Protect Our Futures PAC, a recently created super PAC headed by 30-year-old billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried, who oh, founded great. the crypto exchange program FTX. Oh, what? Sammy? Sammy Jerry's boy? Here. What? Yay. It's like, Sammy. Super, how many more members of like the supervillain squad are we going to team up here? You know? Like, right. meanwhile, this... at the Halls of Injustice. No, uh, no, 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 no. Reef, I'm sorry. <sighs> it's done like this. <clears throat> meanwhile, in the Halls of Justice. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, sorry, sorry. Oops, not, not in the Halls of Justice. <clears throat> Injustice. There meanwhile. No, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Meanwhile, in the dark, dangerous swamps of Mount Doom, the Legion of... Uh, the uh, uh, Legion sorry, of Doom? Legion of Doom. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. 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 You got it. Me meanwhile, <clears throat> hold on. Three, two, one. Meanwhile, in the dangerous swamps of Florida, the Legion of Doom gathers around. In it contains the most nefarious people you have ever heard. The cuck Bernie Sanders. I just need 15 more dollars. You have <laughs> the crybaby. Hey, oh, see, you guys just want to just date me. You have Sam Bakeman freed. Sorry, I lost the money. And so much more. <laughs> oh. I, I, I couldn't do the other voices. I'm Please sorry. clip that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone will clip that for us. Thank you. And yeah. so much more. You have so Nancy Pelosi. G give, give me a drink, kids. I need a drink. And then Wait. Mickey Mouse. Ha -ha. I will own all your favorite intellectual properties. Ha ha. Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> hey, these people. There you go. I, I, I got, I got to work more. The meanwhile, in the people? Legion of Doom. Yeah, who, are, who are? What do you mean, those people? <laughs> Who's on, people? Joe. What are you talking about? Get out of here, Joe. Um, but anyway, uh, a little bit more, right? We got anyway, Sam Bankman Freed. We got a little bit more. Um, this oh, Chantel pack. Brown coming up. Great, fantastic. <laughs> you get out of me. <laughs> Sorry. This super PAC was spending millions of dollars across the country and has spent more 
than a million dollars in support of Congresswoman Chantel Brown and against Nina Turner, who was vocal in her criticism of Israel, according to Open Secrets. It also spent another million dollars in support of Valerie Foshi, who defend who defeated Nina Alam, a Muslim American candidate who had been critical of Israel in this year's Democratic primary in North Carolina. We search, we search a little farther, and we noticed that this pack literally had hands in every race where the candidate, there was a candidate critical of Israel, Dada told MEE. And this was the, the Bankman Freed pack, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So I think there's one more or two more. Despite the concerns, the Florida-Palestine network continued to support Frost because of a Zoom meeting he held with them in March 2022. During that meeting, according to multiple people who spoke with MME and publicly stated by the Florida-Palestine Network, Frost had verbally reiterated his support for Palestinian rights for the BDS movement and also pledged again to be in support of ending U.S. military aid with Israel. He also promised to include the Palestinian Network input in any future position paper that he put out regarding Israel and Palestine. A spokesperson for the Frost campaign confirmed to Jewish Insider that the meeting had taken place, but without elaborating, said he did not agree with FBN's accounting of the events. Then just two weeks before the date of the primary election and several days after early voting was already underway, an article was published in Jewish Insider with a position paper by Frost on Palestine and Israel and Palestine. No one that spoke with MEE for his story is aware of who created this position paper. According to the spokesman that spoke with... Jewish Insider. Jewish Insider, okay. Thank you. Frost spoke with a wide variety of, quote, individuals and organizations as he wrote his position paper, including the pro-Israel group Democratic Majority for Israel. In that paper, Frost said U.S. military aid to Israel is one of the most important parts of foreign aid that we contribute to. It also says that the BDS movement is extremely problematic and undermines the chances of peace. Of course. It's like, can't, we, we can't attack their money at all. The position paper, which was his first statement on public record about the Israel-Palestine Palestinian issue, opposed many of the promises he made on Palestine, according to the Pal Florida Palestine Network. Considering the anti-Palestinian positions paper's timing was during early voting, the deceit and betrayal many people had gone to the polls and to the ballot box, also misled to believe he was progressive and unaware of his in his violent abandonment of Palestinians in our collective liberation struggle, said Moore Brock. Dallas said he was completely disheartened by what had happened with Frost's campaign and feared that all the work they had done to support him would end up being used against the Palestinian rights for which he and others were fighting. We really stood by his side. We were lit literally were in the streets going and telling people to vote for Maxwell. And then all of a sudden we were abandoned. It just feels it's really sad. Frost campaign did not respond to Middle East Eye requests for comment on this story. Emotional so, damage. Yeah. In the worst way possible. Oh. Uh, well, um, uh, again, it should it should come as no surprise that a politician uh, like that uh, arrives out of the woodworks. You know, um, in our experience covering politics here in Chicago from 2017 to 2019, when we were out there in the field, we ran into our fair share of liars and frauds who I'm very happy to say lost their elections, but even pulled the wool over a lot of good people's eyes. And uh, what I would say to people is be careful and vet vet these politicians. Vet no. them thoroughly. I don't care if they're part of Gen Z or millennial. You know, a millennial and, or Gen Z can be just as corrupt as someone from Gen X or. Well, Boomer. you millennials you know, you know. out there need Pokemon to go to the polls. You hear me? You got to do it. Um, but Glenn Greenwald has some funny, words. Like, the Nexus yeah, so of San Bacon Freed. Sean McElwee yeah, and Richie Torres has been partially told, but only partially, Torres, the pure case of what AOC called Trojan horses, is being groomed for higher office. Every identity box weaponized to advance his Israel fixation and status quo power. So, and it's interesting that Glenn said this, and 
So to give some context for me, I only knew of Richie Torres, thanks in part to Richard Methurst, who called him out yes. two years ago as basically being a APAC stand. You know? Yeah, well, you want to And I've noticed and I've noticed on Twitter, he's been very quiet. Mm-hmm. Like he really hasn't made any move. He really hasn't rocked the boat too much. Oh, you mean, you mean Faust? No, Torres. Torres. Oh, yeah. Um, but I've noticed since Hakeem Jeffries has become, you know, minority leader, he's been a lot more active on social media. And I think especially within the last two weeks, given what has been happening with George Santos, uh, he's really kind of cashing in on that. And we gotta get I Richie to put this as a hot take. I put this as a hot take. And th- again, this is just speculation, but I feel that Richie Torres is gearing himself out to be the next Hakeem Jeffries. Mm. I think just given the position that he's in, of course, he's in New York. He has, he's pro Israel through and through. He just is like the spinning image to me of what Hakeem Jeffries is that what the Democratic Party in particular loves. And, you know, he's Afro-Latino, he's gay, so he hits, you know, a lot of those, uh, he hits, he checks those boxes, and he's pro-Israel. So the idea that, you know, Max, well, Maxwell, you know, you know, is being endorsed by him, and he calls himself a progressive, I think is... It's expected, but at the same time, it's very damning that um, he's already kind of capitulated to the establishment. And he's not part of Justice Democrats. He's not part of any organization, as far as I can tell, other than what he was mentioning in this article with the presidents. But all the same, it just goes to show, as you said, Kit, you know, Mm -hmm. don't trust them until, you know, they show you otherwise what they're capable of doing, you know, and... But yeah, I just feel bad that he basically used this community for his ends and only to really renege on everything like days before. Well, yeah, again, if I was part of that campaign, like think about how the people who went to bat for cinema, there are so many activists and uh, people on the left that were with her when she was an activist. Then she was with the Green Party. Then she was with progressive Democrats. And And as soon as she got her seat of power, all those activists, Green Party people, progressive Democrats, Justice Democrats, they got a whole bunch of knives in their back because that's what cinema did. That's what Frost did to all his supporters. He doesn't care about you. Right now, what he's thinking is, OK, if I continue to do a good job, maybe I can get enough suckers to vote for me next election and I have Democratic establishment support. Right. That's what he's going to try and do. He, yeah. he, he, what he did, what it, what it is was he, he a ladder was built for him. He climbed up the wall and then pulled the ladder up right after him so no one can climb up after him. Right. And of course, you know, you know, no, nothing on mainstream media is mentioning this at all. He hasn't been held accountable for this. No, but know, he should but be. He should be. But he's right now considered the darling. You know, obviously, like the big thing story right now, as I said earlier, like he can't find an apartment now. I know where he wants to live. He wants to live, if those of you know in D.C., he wants to live in Navy Yard, which is the neighborhood mm. where AOC lives. Mm. You know, AOC, a, who drives a Tesla, by the way. Right. Oh, I'm not, I would be, I'm fairly certain he's trying to live in the building that AOC lives in. Mm. You know, but. But he wants to date know, her. He just wants to date but her. But you know what? Like, it, but, you know, and he's mentioned, you know, like this. He said he will be okay because he's in Congress. Like millions of people who are struggling with the same issue that he is will not be so lucky. I'm very glad he mentioned that. The question is that I have for him is what do you plan to do about it? Like, are you going to use this experience to really advocate for people, especially in low income situations who have bad credit as far as ensuring that they get housing? Mm. My doubt, my guess is probably not. You know? So, um, you want to have Glenn finish this out? Quick minute. Yeah, very quick minute. So, Glenn mm-hmm. was actually this was when Glenn interviewed AOC. You know, regarding you know, like basically stuff 
like what Frost just did, not in this mm-hmm. case, but just in general. And that was what she was saying here. And, you know, you can tell this was back in the, like when 2018. Yeah. 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 So if you want to play it, read. User on through. So what do you what is your position just generally on that identity politics debate? And what role do you think it ought to have um, for voters in the 14th congressional district when deciding who, who they should vote for? It's an excellent question, because sometimes people throw this term around identity politics. And a lot of people, when they use that term, they'll all mean something different. And so uh, in terms of using the term identity politics as vote for me, I am X, Y, Z, um, to use that as the sole basis for voting for someone, I think, is, is incorrect and it's flawed. Um, because, you know, there are a lot of, I think, I, I mean, there are a lot of Trojan horses, <laughs> you know. There are a lot of folks that say, vote for me, I am this intersection of different identities, but at the same time, they still try to advance or are prim- primarily financed by special interests. So it doesn't necessarily get us to where we need to be. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maxwell Frost <sighs> is the newest one. Okay. Well, Maxwell Frost at this point, like, here's the thing. To AOC's credit, at least she took her time before she abandoned us. This guy was like, deuces, right. out of here right away. And right. farted as he left the room and said, hey, enjoy it. Oh, that's look, that's. I, you know what? I would love to meet Maxwell Frost in person. I'll love it, you know, and I may have the opportunity to one of these days, perhaps, and kind of read in, in him a little bit, but, you know, but I mean, it's on par for the course, you know, as, you know, so, but it is very upsetting given his age and yeah. he's already kind of capitulated to, but be, that being said, he has a bright future if he keeps this up and he's young enough, so he'll be around for I mean, a long time. Speaking of bright futures, U.S. military got quite a bit of bright futures. It looks like, um, but uh, Mil- I have to make sure this military is this military scenario. military's got a huge endorsement. Oh, by the way, I did send you a personal video that Sam yeah. Bankman Freed did say. Uh, it's it's from him, and mm. it's a it's, it's a personal apology to the people. Actually, uh, you know, uh, two days ago he pleaded uh, not guilty. So, you know, I I think it's kind of like some breaking news you'll see it in the chat. It's it's breaking news. I find it mm. to be phenomenal. I got it. There we go. I just got a Twitter and then close this and then this. <laughs> this does sound there's no sound. Overleveraged Ponzi slush fund for myself. Hey, hi. Uh, so uh, I'm SBF, uh, founder and CEO of FTX. My accidental theft of our customers' life savings to create a giant overleveraged Ponzi slush fund for myself is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say I am deeply sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck that one. <laughs> sorry. What is he playing Diablo 2? No, that's StarCraft. One of those. I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, politicians! Yay! <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And he's gone. Some breaking news in the case against disgraced crypto founder Sam Bankman Freed. He was just released on $250 million bond. $250 million. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> no, I thought you guys it. would like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you're those. Good. No, you're, you're good, good, dude. Well, I don't mind we you wasting your here. own time. You know, I'm fine with that. <laughs> we um, have fun here. So. Yeah, we do. All right. I got to 
on sorry. Full screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. Well, let's hit you with our next story this evening. Uh, a little bit more than 250 million. We've got like, how much is that? How much is that kit? Can you can you count the zeros? Oh, uh, that's a billion. That's a big old. <laughs> Eight hundred billion. Eight hundred and fifty-eight billion dollars. A billion. Eight hundred fifty-eight billion dollars. Oh, Colin wanted me to do that. We had to have the doo doo doots in there. Yes. So. Oh, I didn't um, hear the doo doo doots. You didn't hear the doo doo doots. <laughs> I didn't hear the doo doo doots. No. <laughs> Those. Hopefully. Chat heard them. If the chat heard it, that's fine. But I don't need to right. hear it. But uh, I wonder why. Um, anyway, you're hearing it all earlier. Um, how about this? What about now? Yes. Ooh. There we go. We got it. We did yeah. it. Uh, you know. We by the way, it. I actually, but he, he, hearing hearing that line, you know, um. Side note, I always thought about doing like a because personally, I always wanted to be a uh, you know, either a paleontologist or work in film mm. or movie or script writing. And as a kid, you know, I remember even as a teenager, you know, I like the Austin Powers films, especially the third one that came out. Mm -hmm. and I always yeah. thought, like, hey, if there was ever a fourth Austin Powers film, I would set it up to where Dr. Evil wins. And like he takes over the world or he takes over America, but he finds out like, like one, the senators and the quote unquote good guys, they were stealing from the people. They were criminals. And he's like, well, wait a minute. And like he comes around like, I thought I was the bad guy. You're the good guys. Here. <laughs> like and, and be Austin perfect. Powers is being is being tricked by like other people to because he's part of the resistance to stop Dr. Evil because Dr. Evil is doing good for people like he's giving them health care. He's he's fixing up the infrastructure. He's giving education it's like because Dr. Evil's like, well, there's nothing evil for me left to do. Like I got to do good. And so, what like those, everyone else, what, what are those? What does that hospital look like? It cuts to like farmer with produce, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. take sorry, take sorry, three. get off topic. Okay, take yeah, okay. take three. We got our third story this evening from Bean Boy Judd Legume. Um, eight hundred and fifty-eight billion dollars. Oh. I got I got it that time, chat. Yes, I got, got it that it. time. <laughs> you fucking chat. God. <laughs> so in 2015, the United States spent 585 billion on its military, more than the next 11 countries combined. What a start. Um, since then, the United States withdrew from Afghanistan. Ending its longest running war. <laughs> and yet. Eight years later, President Biden approved $858 billion in military spending, an increase of about $273 billion. Had military spending kept pace with inflation since 2015, military spending would be below $700 billion. Instead, the military budget is barreling towards $1 trillion annually. Okay, the budget of the Pentagon now exceeds the budgets for the next 10 largest cabinet agencies combined. Current defense spending, after adjusting for inflation, is higher than it was at any point during the Cold War. 2023 will represent the largest U.S. military budget since World War II. Okay. Oh. While conventional wisdom is that American politics is hopelessly divided, Republicans and Democrats routinely come together for that, what's it called, Colin? What's that called? Unity. You know what it is. Um, <laughs> Democrats routinely I, I, come together. Go ahead, Kit. It's it's called, as the great Barack Obama would say, uh, I'd call it bipartisanship. Bipartisanship. <laughs> George uh, fucking Carlin would, would call it a big club if I do remember, you know, my, my book studies. Um, so we've got... There is virtually no public criticism of military spending 
increases among members of Congress, while our support um, for larger defense budgets is seen as expression of patriotism. In the House, only one member, AOC, voted against the omnibus bill that contained the military spending. Many Republicans opposed the bill, but only because they believed it contained too much support for domestic programs. Pause there for a second. Yes. Shout wow. out to the DSA for commending AOC for not for voting no, but fail to call out everyone else who did. Yes. Who was in the squad. Uh, by the way, DSA, forgot. DSA, look, um, I don't know why you went to bat hard for AOC after all those years, but I mean, sooner or later, maybe most of your membership will wake up that she is just a neoliberal mm. uh, fraud. You know, every but, every know. rose uh, does have its thorn kit. Uh, every one of them. You got me. You got me. You got I got gotcha. you. I got all you. Y'all weren't ready for it. I'll be here all week, folks. Um, <laughs> while Republicans and some Democrats insist that uh, paid for. With budget cuts or tax increases, military spending increases are routinely financed with deficit spending, and no one is wringing their hands about the inflationary impact of adding hundreds of billions to the military budget, but money printers still go burr, just in case you were wondering. Um, the absence of a real public debate does not mean these aren't real trade-offs. To this level of defense spending, 1% of the 2023 defense budget is $8.58 billion. That could finance over 1 million public housing units, enough to effectively end homelessness in the United States. The federal government currently spends about $3.5 billion annually to combat homelessness. In case you were wondering, um, would the United States be better off with an $850 billion military budget instead of $858 million and much less homelessness? What about increasing compensation for teachers? Colin would like that, I'm sure or extending the expanded child tax credit to keep kids out of poverty. How about we do that? These are all legitimate policy debates, but these debates are not happening, says Judd Legume. It's not Ukraine either. It's the, is the 2023 military budget inflated to account for the cost of helping Ukraine fend off the Russian invasion? No, the 858 billion budget includes just 800 million in support for Ukraine. Just 800 million dollars just in case you're gonna milk that for what it's worth absolutely <laughs> i am <laughs> this is not to say that the biden administration or congress believes ukraine will only require 800 million rather congress is considering and expected to approve an extra 21.7 billion for the pentagon above the already expanded 2023 annual budget to allocate more money to resupply materials used in Ukraine. Um, so any thoughts so far? Like, hold on math. I have mm -hmm. to do math. Hold on. Math. Hold on. We're going to get an edge. We're going to get an education lesson here. Very quick here, folks, because again, uh, so see. much of this money has been lost to quote Dwight, the Eisenhower again, be careful. Beware of the military industrial complex for again. It's, it's again, he, it's so much money has been wasted. In fact, hold on. Let me get Eisenhower's direct quote. Eisenhower. It's like, don't trust the military, military. industrial complex. Yep. yep. Hang on. Well, the great Shaquille O'Neal once said, it's all about geometry. Colin, do you have that geometry? Yeah, well, again, math hard. Um, <laughs> so, and it's too many zeros, and I don't work with that many zeros normally mm. in real life. But <laughs> um, the calculator's only got this many numbers. But, so, well, how much money was sent to Ukraine? That was eight hundred million, right? Yes, plus twenty-one. So is that one? So is that one or ten percent of? 800 billion i would be, imagine one percent yes because you're working in zeros and so you take a yeah. zero off yeah so it's one percent so really like what we're sending to ukraine is literally a drop in the bucket bucket literally as far as yes but they're willing to tack on 21 billion just for that to the pentagon right so here we, so here we really, go uh go i ahead. actually got the quote do you mind do you mind 
Uh, mm-hmm. every, every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired signifies in the final sense a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not closed. Uh, this world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the blood, uh, the sweat of its laborers, the geniuses of its scientists, the hopes of its children. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this, a modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, well-equipped hospitals. Uh, hospital, sorry about that. Uh, it is some 50 miles of concrete pavement. We pay for a single uh, fighter with a half a, mil- a half a million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. This is not a way of life at all in any true sense. Under a cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, chance for and- speed for Joe Biden probably in another speech, but you know, um, <laughs> like anyway, you want to see where that money's going, boys and girls at home. Um, so oh, according God. to an analysis by Stephen Simler, approximately four hundred and fifty-two billion of the eight hundred and fifty-eight billion military oh, wow. budget will go to the private contractors every year. More than half of military spending goes to contractors like Lockheed Martin, North of Grumman, and Raytheon. Ugh. The axis of greed and evil. Um, so here's that graph in case people were wondering. So Biden's Pentagon budget will give $452 billion to private companies, right? So in 2012, is it, look, it goes up. It's, it's up. it's up here now. Here's private contracts. Here's other spending graphs, people. So literally half, as I said. Yes. Um, more than. Jesus Christ. Investors have taken note of unrestrained spending on weapons and other military equipment. The S&P 500 I- index declined 19.4% in 2022. But Lockheed Martin and North of Grumman each saw their stock price increase in 2022 by more than 35%. And I'm sure Nancy got a cut. Um... So look at these graphs. Look at that. Look, look at that. It goes up. That's that's how graphs work when, when we're talking about stocks. Up is good. Buy, buy here. Sell here. You know what I'm saying? And look at it go up more. Here's North of Grumman. These are one year, right? For both Lockheed. That's a, And that's just a so you all know. And just so you all know that these politicians last year beat the market again, just like they did in 2020 and in 20 uh, and, and in 2021 in 2022, our U S politicians in the house and Senate successfully beat the market and raked in millions upon millions in stock. Oh, yeah, trades. They did. But again, this is what makes, and I, like Jamal Bowman, of Turkey was it's so corny as fuck, but like the fact that he was bragging online that like, oh, we like the Democrats, we fell in line and like we voted for our team Jeffries. Like, yeah, because he, you're responsible for voting for this shit. And you're happy about that? I mean. So that's not flex, dude. No, it just tells so, me. We're fucked. Where we really are. Um. But to continue, in 2022, the defense industry employed 770 federal lobbyists. That means defense contractors employ nearly two federal lobbyists for every member of Congress. They're playing zone defense out here, people. uh, There's more than man coverage. This is two-man coverage. Um, I just see people running a screen. Sorry. Anyway. um, So... They spent over $101 million on federal lobbying in the 2022 cycle. Defense industry PACs and executives donated $18.9 million to federal candidates. The money was spread relatively equally between Republicans and Democrats because we're they're part of a uniparty. 
um, the spending in 2022, but the defense industry was not an aberration between 2001 and 2021. The top five defense contractors, Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Raytheon, spent over $1.2 billion on federal lobbying and campaign contributions, according to data compiled by the Center for Responsive Politics. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, an advocate for large military spending increases, was on the board of Raytheon prior to being nominated by Joe Biden, my good friend. The position paid him 300000 per year. 2022, the defense industry. What? I clicked the next button. What happened? You might have missed. Maybe. There we go. There Report you go. By the project on government oversight concluded that the revolving door of Pentagon officials and senior military leaders seeking lucrative post-government jobs end up conflating. What is the best financial interest of defense contractors, excessively large Pentagon budgets, endless wars, and overpriced weapon systems with what is the best interest of military effectiveness and protecting citizens? So, keep in mind, this is money that the Pentagon doesn't want. Every year, the top Pentagon uh, brass submits a list of unfunded priorities, essentially a wish list, everything that they want from here to the moon to the White House histor historically, the understanding was that not everything on this list would be funded. Resources are limited, and it is the role of civilian leadership to de determine priorities. God, that's... Okay, this year, the White House examined this list and proposed a budget of $802 billion. In recent years, however, military leaders have started sending the list of rejects to the Congressional Armed Services Committees as a sort of appeal. For a time, these lists were generally ignored. But not any longer. This year's congressional committees have rubber stamped nearly every single item on the list. So, after adding funding for weapon systems that the White House deemed unnecessary, keep that in mind, Congress also added funding for weapons that the Pentagon itself does not want. This year's budget, for example, prohibits the retirement of the F-22 Raptor fighter jet and scuttles retirement plans for various aircraft, including B-1, F-15, E-3, AWACS, and the C-40 aircraft. Uh, the Navy sought to decommission 24 si ships and build eight, but the approved budget authorities and sequels to Battleship, the procurement of 11 Battle Force ships, and reverse plans for the early retirement of 12 vessels in the coming year. So... so we don't want the toys. No. Pentagon. Our stuff Congress. is falling apart. We'll give them to you anyway. The Marines we'll give them need better you. crayons. And Hey! 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 Hey, my dad's got good crayons, all right? It's going to be fine. Uh, hey, buddy. We need so, those crayons, all right? Now, first of all, first do. of all, we always got hand-me-downs. That's what the Marine Corps yes. always got, hand-me-downs. Yes. Yeah, people, people in Nam were still using the Garand, yes. Um, Desert Storm still using M60s, and they hated it then. Nom guys loved it. New guys like, nah, I don't want to lug that thing around. That thing's heavy. Fuck that. Um, so this is what did get cut. The defense spending bill includes a four percent across the board pay increase for military personnel and civilians, but there was a proposal for additional two point four percent for troops and defense. Department civilians making less than 45000 a year to account for inflation. Inflation in 2022 was about 7. The increase would have benefited 783,000 service members and about 37,000 civilians. The benefit, however, was removed by House and Senate negotiators. Oh, fuck Military this. Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck yeah. that, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you... <sighs> so... Hundreds of thousands of military personnel that make less than forty five thousand annually, they don't got lobbyists, so you know what they I'm saying? Ain't shit. Yeah. Yeah, they ain't getting shit. Oh they also can't pass don't forget, audit. No audit. Five times in a row now? Yep. Yep. Seven of the twenty seven entities that make up the Department of Defense received a clean bill of financial health. They're good. They're all right. What? Yeah. That same Department of Defense that spends about $1 billion per year employing 16,000 auditors to conduct the financial review but has not been able to achieve meaningful improvements. They don't get money. They don't need it. They're good. Um, this, 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 is, this is not... Here's the thing. Even the Romans didn't do anything this incompetent until nearing the end 
of their golden era. So, I mean, come on. They also had this far better roads. Far better roads. That is true. That is true. We we should not compare ourselves to the Roman Empire. At least their roads and are still around. Better water. Ask Flint. Um, <laughs> like... Ah. Oh. As Chicago too, we we have lead in our drinking water. Yes, yes, um, and dead bodies in your lakes, but we don't ask about them. You know, no, we don't. <laughs> we keep that very quiet. Um, so uh, did you did you hear about our next story, Kit? Did you hear about it? Um, let's, this right oh, here. No, this guy right here and this lady. So, oh, it's Joe three zero three three. What could possibly go wrong here? Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Um, this one's going to go quick. So, um, Jordan Schachtel informs us that um, an Epstein targeting Virgin Islands prosecutor is swiftly fired after Biden arrives in town. Virgin Islands governor has just pitched the Biden administration on a renewable energy bailout for his territory. Just in case you were wondering. Mm-mm. what was happening there. So we're getting a little bit of, a little bit of backdoor deals for the big guy again. Um, so on December 27th, the U.S. Virgin Islands Attorney General Denise George filed a major lawsuit against J.P. Morgan in a Manhattan federal court alleging the bank, uh, the banking behemoth helped to facilitate Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking enterprise on the island, which through she has jurisdiction. So the local St. Thomas source newspaper reported his primary residence was Little St. James, his private island off St. Thomas, where for years he trafficked in girls and young women and ran a complex web of shell companies registered to the U.S. Virgin Islands that enabled his crimes, those court documents allege. Allege. Just like he allegedly committed suicide. Okay. Um, (laughs) So... Here's here's Breitbart reporting tribal United States Virgin Islands Attorney General Denise George claimed banking giant J.P. Morgan turned a blind eye. Right. So the same day, okay, President Joe Biden arrived in St. Croix, part of the Virgin Islands for his week long vacation. Same day. Okay. December 28th. He's showing up. Right. So All people over here can get to where they need to go over Christmas. Keep that in mind. Right. With the lowest temperatures in almost all the st- like states in a while. Right. Like everything was <laughs> fucking below freezing. Um, See, if this were Trump, just one second, Reef. If this were Trump who did this, like the media would be having a field day. But because Biden went, was it was okay for him. To, like nothing. Like, no mention su- of it. I'm surprised his arm bends that way for a salute. Sometimes he reverts back to the old way, you know? He's like, uh, I'm old. It doesn't <laughs> It doesn't go straight out, you know what I mean? Oh, yes, the other way, the other way, yes. Yeah, yeah, that way. Um, so, on New Year's Eve, perhaps the perfect time to sneak out a story, Virgin Island Democratic Governor... Albert Bryan released a short statement announcing that he had swiftly removed the AG from her role. I relieved Denise George of her duties as attorney general this weekend. Bryan said, I thank her for her service to the people of the territory during the past four years as attorney general and wish her the best in future endeavors. Like, okay. Yeah, bye bye now. Um, so attorney general Denise George removed from post. Right? This was on January 2nd. Okay, just in case we're keeping track of time. So, despite many media inquiries, including our inquiry, Brian has yet to explain why he fired the prosecutor on New Year's Eve. There are no Republic, there are no public reports of a physical meeting between Biden and Brian. However, when Biden arrived in St. Croix, the Democratic governor publicly pitched the president on bolstering investment in the U.S. land. So, yeah. I'm sorry. That is all suspicious, folks. Jevin O.A. Williams would agree with you. Odd, a sitting Democratic POTUS visits the VI and the sitting Democratic governor Yep, of a U.S. territory, heavily reliant on federal dollars, were not seen together the entire trip. Brian is a good politician and could have found his way onto his schedule. Vacation or not, Distance much? 
So suspicious. It's extremely suspicious. It's definitely sus for sure. Um, I really hope it brings to light our energy crisis and the more moves we are making to finally resolve a decades old problem through renewables and efficiency. Gordon Bryan uh, said, Governor Bryan said, I think it also reminds the entire nation that we are Americans and deserve a quality of life, representation and benefits equal to those that Americans on the mainland have become accustomed to. The Virgin Islands governor spent the past few months making a hard push for an infusion of taxpayer funds for his territory. In late November, Brian added, arrived in Washington to appeal for more federal money to subsidize their unreliable renewable energy footage. And roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh, Good day, everybody. Go. Last and final day in Washington. Had a really productive week up here. Cold, but productive. Uh, we came up here, four main things we wanted Cold, to take care productive. of this week. Number one, our energy Cold. situation with WAPA, lining up our federal Cold. programs to make sure we take care of that. Number two, making sure that we get all our ducks in a row for federal, federal Medicaid. Three, we wanted to make sure we get the rum cover over straight. And of course, jobs for America's graduates, of which I'm on the board. So we had some real good discussions with HUD this week, went to the White House. We have strong support to finally fix WAPA forever. It's gonna cost us a little bit of money, but I'm confident that working Wait with Andy Smith, with. the legislature, our delegate to Congress, we have finally got a plan to get to the bottom of this. A lot of things going on in terms of DC and money moving around. Everybody having a pr pretty much challenge with energy and the cost of fuel, but we think we have a solution in sight at this point, and we're working with everybody to get it done. Our federal Medicaid, of course, and our rum cover over, we went to see various delegates. So up here on the Hill this week, I've seen uh, C Congressman Jason Smith, uh, Senator Manchin, uh, Senator Wyden, just a host of people. And we're, right now we're going in to see Senator Gillibrand, who's uh, got really close relations to St. Croix. And what I'll, overall, I want to say we have real good support. What is her fucking offshore bank there, you mean? Uh, people like yeah. the things that we're doing on the <laughs> island, keeping it strong. And I've explained to them, we fixed our retirement system, economy doing well, tourism doing well. Now it's time for us to really move to the next step and fix our energy situation once and for all. A lot of moving parts in that, VTOL, generator placement, purchase, buying gas, uh, making it through for the next six months. But we've painted a picture of a bright future for energy in the Virgin Islands, using our renewable and all our resources that we have from the federal aid in order to get us done. Good news, it's not gonna cost the federal government one additional dime. We didn't ask for any more money. Uh, we just asked for permission to use our money in the places that we see fit. So feeling really positive about the trip, looking forward to coming home and warmer weather. And today I had the great pleasure of hosting uh, our Virgin Islands students from St. Thomas and St. Croix, Jobs for America's Graduates, a program that I that started in the Virgin day. Islands and now I sit as vice chair of the national board. Really exciting. They got a lot of things coming up for the next couple of days. The Commissioner of Labor and the Commissioner of Education is up here. We had the chance to tour one of the new schools uh, here in D.C. that the same contractor who's billing Arthur Richards has built. And I'll tell you from the shots, it's going to be spectacular when you see what this contractor can do. So really excited, really want to get home. Looking forward to coming back down and being in that warm weather again. So until I see you again, you be good. Love you and take care. Love you. Bye bye. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, we don't love you. Bye but bye. here's the thing. Oh. Here, he, 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 uh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt this, but Go uh, ahead. look. That that, that scene where, where he's in the meeting room and they're discussing, I honestly have to say, some of that looks scripted like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm saying, here, here's the thing. it's It looks like they're talking like this. Like <laughs> yeah. You've right? heard of right? um... but, 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 but what I really want to think of saying is like, okay, listen, hi, Colin, look, I'm just going to be bullshitting for you for a while, so I need you to nod your head and agree and agree and li listen to what I'm saying, and then I want you to say something to me to where I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Mm, okay, mm. yeah, I see. Yes, okay, wow, mm. wow. And 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 then Reef, then Reef, of course, hold on, nod and agree. And then you're gonna say something that really blows both me and Colin's mind. We're just like, hmm. So mm. go ahead. Re uh, okay. uh, <laughs> I, I've got I've got stuff. Uh they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. That's that's I think I think that they definitely had us in the first half here. Um Oh, dude.
that was just the double CK for about two minutes. That's that's what that was. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can have. I don't want to play it again. Uh, YouTube every time I click you does not mean I want you to play again. And watch, I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click the button again, and it's gonna be like, you want to play everybody. again? No, I don't want to play again. Um, never YouTube, never. God. How dare you? Um, hey, Roger Meadows is here. Yay! Roger Meadows is in the house. If you're not following him on Twitter, please do so. Yep, we're also over on the Rockfin, Roger. Just in case you want to leave, you know, I don't know, <laughs> cookies or you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I am once again asking for your financial support. Please. No, we need subs. Subs. That too. <laughs> we need the subs that first. <laughs> um, love you, Roger. Go, scroll, scroll back. We talked about ballot initiatives. You go, go subs. back. Subs. We, we actually, we actually them. had Jamal Green. Like we showed that segment of Jamal Green being interviewed on on the show. So, yeah. Roger, watch the first hour. Um, you will love it. Yep. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Under the new governor's watch, the Virgin Islands has become a black hole for billions of dollars in federal fund, reports the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. Um, the federal government appears to have plenty of leverage for a request from the U.S. Virgin Islands. David Williams, the president of the Taxpayers Advocacy Group, has described the territory as completely relying on federal handouts. So, yay. Yay. Uh, we did it. We did it, Patrick. We saved the city. Look, here's Albert Bryan Jr. That same that same guy, the president and the vice president, joined us today at White House meeting. Great discussion on how the territories can benefit from renewable initiatives and the safe restart of the refinery, the promotion of electric vehicles and free charging stations will be major. Yay! Electric vehicles too. I'm I'm sure King We've Twitter will be about happy. We, we've talked about electric vehicles and how certain countries, well, in Southwest Africa are... Right. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Make those fucking batteries here. Make them here. China, do what you want. But you people, you can't do that no more. Um, JB on our show said, expect a coup in Zimbabwe. Uh, yes. If we're placing... You can price his right rules. You can go a little sooner. We'll let that count. Um, is the inflation still happening high in Zimbabwe too? Like, is like, do they still so. have like that trillion dollar note? I think oh, we should look into a deep dive in that. But my guess is probably yeah. But they did ban the uh, export of lithium, so that's yes. that's fun. Um, that's well for now. We'll see. Yep. Yeah, and given the uh, African summit that happened in DC a few weeks ago, there's no telling what else, like if that will change or not. But, so, yeah. in case y'all forgot, my good friend Joe is no amateur when it comes to firing prosecutors. When he was serving as vice president in the Obama administration, Biden obviously forced out a Ukrainian prosecutor who was investigating his family's business enterprises. In November, under the now fired AG. Epstein estate settled with the U.S. Virgin Island government and paid out $105 million in cash and half of the proceeds from the sale of Epstein Island. Through this lawsuit and settlement, the Attorney General's office, acting on behalf of the government, is using its authority to enforce the laws of the Virgin Islands against criminal enterprises and protect public safety, read the November statement from former AG George's office in the lawsuit she filed against J.P. Morgan. The AG claimed that her investigation revealed... Morgan knowingly, neg negligently, and unlawfully provided and pulled the levers through which recruiters and victims were paid and was indispensable to the operation concealment of the Epstein trafficking enterprise. So, pay me my money and I'll shut up. Shut up. <laughs> God damn. I know, huh? Don't you just uh, get sick to your stomach knowing how just how corrupt everything is and how everything is intertwined? No, but no. again, and, and I'll, I said this in the first segment, and I'll say this to you again, Kit. You know, I think this is why it is very important for people to not to say you shouldn't be concerned about national politics, federal politics. It's important, but it shouldn't be any more important than what's happening on the local level because. Yeah those things have direct influence 
in what's happening in your life. So, you know, so I think, and this is really my hope, you know, like if, if there's any resolution, you know, that people should be taking in 2023 is this. Like, again, not to say, not to say you shouldn't worry, be worried about federal politics that has its place, but focus more on what's happening in your town, in your city, you know, whatever is happening, find out who your city council people are, find out who is on your board of ed, you know, find out who's your mayor, your governor, focus on the things that you're able to somewhat control, you know, within the general vicinity of where you are, because those have the biggest effect. And so, as I said earlier, you know, the kit, you know, thank you for kind of highlighting you know, what's happening in Chicago as an example for what independent media should be doing. I think, do mm -hmm. think often we kind of focus on what's going on and it makes sense, you know, obviously like what's happening on the federal level, you know, like any implications of that, but, you know, but I also feel like we don't talk about local politics enough and people, and I saw like Delaney, you know, saying it's, it is kind of demoralizing, you know, it's even on the local level, but but it's important, you know, if we want to support genuine good people who we can organize around and kind of uplift to positions of power in a way that helps them keep accountable and then elevate them into, you know, state and hope maybe even federal level like work in terms of, you know, being governor or even like from there, you know, um, congressperson or even a senator, possibly even the president then that's the way to go because that's the only way that we can be able to see the change that we well, desire to see. And, and with this story, it's ugh, like everything in this trial, when in regards to Epstein, has been blatantly corrupt from like minute one, right. out in the open, completely in front of people, and nothing's changed, no one else has been arrested, like we're still here right like it's, yeah it's just you know like it, it sucks you know i think the stories that we talked about tonight you know just have this well this theme of corruption and people feeling helpless you know and so like we really want to have be in a position where people are not having some sort of control over what's yeah. happening in our lives and the only way that we can do that is if we band together and really kind of focus in on what can we do more on the ground on the local level and then go from there. Cooperatives, but, unions, I, direct action, right. mutual aid, and really Roger need, Meadows, right, right in chat, talking about worker cooperative manufacturing in the US. We have lithium and cobalt here. Let minor yeah. co-ops go dig for it and establish a supply chain with uh, worker Work. cooperative battery Co manufacturers, sell the cooperative, cooperative car manufacturers. Yeah, exactly. So so here's the thing, Colin, to your point, this is something that I think I want to see more of independent media do. And that's why we why Hard Lens Media had because uh, originally Chicago Corner was just a segment on Hard Lens. But hmm. Chicago Corner had to be its own thing. Now, look, occasionally, yes, yeah, sometimes we will cover some Chicago politics on Hard Lens Media. But I think there needs to be that local independent media coverage, because even if you want to talk about national stories, which I think are great. They're fantastic. Or you want to talk about other current issues that are impacting social media. You need to talk about what's happening in your backyard. Look at TYT, for example. They're a, they're a, they are a large media platform. And what have they chosen to do? Ignore the homelessness crisis, the corruption that's happening in Los Angeles. That's their city, right? That's their territory. That's their home. That's their, that's their home turf. Like and the yet they're ignoring it. Well, I don't think the hoes be doing too much in TYT. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but bitches. That's uh, right. But no, hmm. seriously, TYT uh, as as a platform, as a media network, they just, uh, you know, they're, they're ignoring the bigger issue. But I think all independent media needs to take a stop for a second. Look like, wait a minute, hold on. Is there anything for us at the local level? And that's why we got Chicago Corner. And, you know, I'm glad that you, uh, Colin and Reef, were able to give uh, Hard Lens and Chicago Corner a chance to speak out and 
I want to see more of it happening. I want to see more mutual yep. aid. I want to see more talk about worker co-ops, ballot initiatives, supporting independents, third parties, and building movements and organizations not connected to Washington, D.C. And we yeah. need to see that happen. Right. I think that's starting to happen, what? but we definitely need to do more of that. So but yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Kit Cabello, yep. tell the people at home where they can find you, please. Oh, my goodness. Well, you could find us here at the wonderful YouTube channel called Hard Lens Media. That's H-A-R-D-L-E-N-S-M-E-D-I-A, Hard Lens Media. We are on YouTube, Odyssey, Rockfin, Rumble, and Twitch. Uh, we do ask if you do have, t- if you can do it, please consider being a patron supporter for us. Uh, also, please consider supporting Chicago Corner as well. They're live every Tuesday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube, Rockfin and Odyssey as well. Uh, we're also Hardlands Media's on Can TV. I also want to give a shout out to Jerry Vasilatos, Edward Heller, our moderator. Uh, shout out to Lenny Peterson, who does the Chicago Wine Report and does civically minded Hardlands Media on Thursday at 4 p.m. You know, so there we go. Uh, shout out to uh, the wonderful, incredible Kieran McCown, who's on maternity leave. Shout out to my colleague, Daniel Lupker and FaZe, who run 99 Perspective Studios. And uh, guys, I miss you. So there you go. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to my team. Uh, there's a lot more that I want to do. Oh, wait. Shout out to uh, Lauren, Lauren Schneider, and also the wonderful and outstanding Fair and Balance as well. All right. So. I want to give a huge shout out to my team. Thank you, Reef and Colin, for this opportunity to be on your show. Thank you. And uh, looking Thank forward to you. future collaborations uh, down the road. So let's make 2023 our good year. And oh, my goodness, Tara Reed, Tara, I got to get you back on the show again. I got to get you back on the show. I have yep. to get you back on the show. She's always a good guest. Speaking of which, um, she sounds like she might do a stream Monday if all goes well. So we'll we'll see how that goes. That'll be on this bat channel at normal bat times. Um, yeah. But anyway, just to shamelessly plug, while we still can do that, uh, we're almost at a thousand subs, which would allow us to get those lovely super chats so that we can grift more efficiently. Um, <laughs> so if you want us to keep this grift going. Can we hit a thousand by the yeah. end of the month, please? Yes, please. Please. Nine twenty seven. Come on. Please. We're almost there. Come on, folks. Seven now. Why just why are we not there. at a thousand? Just no, no, no. Right no. Better there. yet. Just... Hashtag make it two thousand, okay? We gotta yeah, go yeah, for yeah. a big number. Get them to two thousand subscribers. If you don't got it, get it. If you don't get it, go figure it out. What's just wrong please. with you? Make it happen. Please and thank you. Please clap. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, Monday, Tar Reed, Tuesday. I think Jesse Jet's gonna do stuff. Um, great, great guest. Honestly, yeah. I had a lot of fun with when he came he on show our show. American tradition. Um, I think we're gonna have clip Sunday. show for Indy on Sunday, unless he's crazy and figures out how to pull the show together while going for the tons of stuff in his life. But um, we'll figure that out. But anything I'm missing. Um, uh, yes, I'm, actually, actually, you are. But Colin, go ahead. Take, take, take. I take. might be doing a stream with Crab allegedly, maybe over the weekend. If cool, ooh, maybe. Um, next we'll week, we'll if guest comes back and and confirms, Danny Haifong will be with us. That should be good. Super excited about that. Um, if we get the, as always, you you got to get people to confirm like five minutes before. You know. You know, <laughs> we got to get that. We got to figure that out. Um, Although, so that should be I a good do time. Thank you that you let me know for like two weeks in advance or maybe three. So, yes. <laughs> um, there you go. Gonna... But there is one thing you d- you did miss, though. Yeah. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. Sure thing. Well, look, hey, how often do I get this chance to kind of just let loose and not be the captain or in control of a show? So... As we see our heroic individuals wrap up Indie News Network, we return back to the Swamps of Doom, where the Legion of Doom has gathered around in this nefarious building. Ah, the greatest of evil masterminds of all time. There's the Cuck Sanders. I'm just asking again, $15? I gotta get some new shoes? The Crybaby AOC. Y'all just want to thank me. We got Barack Obama. Ah, ah, Bomb a wall and send the survivors to Gitmo! 
How did, they how have no... the, the 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 insidious the insidious Mickey Mouse. Ha ha! We're gonna buy all your IPs and own it all. Your childhood belongs to me now. Ha ha! In there uh. is a nefarious mastermind of misinformation, Kermit the Frog. Hi, oh, this is Kermit the Frog here, just telling you to uh, keep on buying the crypto. Don't worry about it. And NFTs. Ah! Kermit the Frog That's... here, and I Kermit would Frog like here. to. Please inform you that I am in fact green. Um, Please clip that. <laughs> what? Please. Clip they, that. There you go. There you go. All right. So, it's, so that's Morty, that's who I have for my. Why, why, why the fuck are we doing impressions, Morty? I don't. It's fucking dumb. The universe oh, geez, is Rick. stupid. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, um, Rick. God. Anyway, this we have derailed officially. Um, yeah. Anyway. I, I think that's it for us. Um, go support yeah. Chairman O'Malley Yeshitella so that he doesn't get arrested. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, go find that on Twitter. Should have shared it from INN. Well, you, you can go there. And look at that IndieNews.network URL scrolling across the screen right there. And the way you can find all our socials, all our members' socials. Kit, your stuff's in the description below. Um, so I think Thank that's you. it. Um, Much anyway. love. Much love. As always, boys and girls, labels are bad. Stay independent. Good night, fam. Good night. Have a good week. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. Easily understand. Easily understand.